welcome to Lincoln, Nebraska, a sold-out Memorial Stadium for the kickoff of the 1998 college football season right here on Fox Sports Net. The very first Eddie Robinson Classic, North Lake, Nebraska, hosting Louisiana Tech. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kevin Frazier, the host of College Football Saturday, and I am very proud to introduce my partner all season long, the Hall of Famer, Kellen Winslow. A lot of you will remember Kellen as a San Diego Charger, but don't forget this five-time pro bowler who was also a Missouri Tiger. Kellen, welcome to the Fox family, and you know what? You've had a lot of success here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Yes, I have, Kevin. Thanks. A pleasure to be here, first of all. Yeah, 1976 and 1978, the Missouri Tigers came in here and beat the Nebraska Cornhuskers in 78, preventing them from winning a national championship. Hey, and speaking of the national championship, last year, sort of a muddled picture. We had co-national champions, Mich Michigan and Nebraska. This year, though, very clear picture, Kellen. Very clear picture. This year, we'll have a bowl championship series. The Fiesta Bowl, number one versus number two, January 4th, 1999. Mark it down on your calendar. Nebraska versus Florida State for the national championship that day. Partner, I like the fact that you got right down to business. Want to remind everybody, coming up on the Marriott Halftime Show, the living legend, Eddie Robinson, will be right here, and he will join us, and so will a very famous alum from Louisiana Tech. I'll let you figure that one out. But right now, let's get it to the guys who are calling today's game, Ron Thulin and the coach, Artie Gigantino. Yeah, thank you very much, Kevin Frazier and Artie. After 19 years as an assistant, Frank Solich takes over for Tom Osborne, and that might be the best matchup not only today, but also throughout the season. Frank Solich versus the legend of Tom Osborne. Well, you got to remember one thing, though, Ron. Frank Solich is a product of Th Tom Osborne and Bob Devaney. This team has responded very well to Frank Solich. They they've had an outstanding offseason. In fact, there were 100 people here in Lincoln this summer working out. I think the biggest X factor, though, today is the fact that Frank Solich is calling the plays for the first time since 1962. Tom Osborne called the plays for 31 years here at the U. University of Nebraska. Well, we have two of the top three offenses from last year here today, and if you want excitement, you have to look no further than the quarterback positions. Well, the number one quarterback for Nebraska is Bobby Newcomb. He played wingback last year. He returned punts. This guy will shock you how well he can run and throw. On the other side of the field, Tim Rattay was second in the nation last year in passing offense. In fact, in nine games, he threw for more than 300 yards. Terry Bradshaw only threw for 300 yards seven times in his career. Well, his favorite receiver is Troy Edwards. He has a couple of records to his credit. Number one in the NCAA in receiving yards last year, number two in receptions. He says nobody on Nebraska can cover him. We're going to find out. We'll step aside and we'll return to Lincoln right after this. 221st consecutive sellout in Lincoln. Welcoming you back. Our third member of our broadcast team is Eric Clemens, and he's on the field right now. Eric? All right, guys, you know, it's incredible standing down here, a sea of red and white everywhere you look, and I might be standing on hallowed ground. Right to my right, as of the Nebraska spring game, the playing surface has been renamed Tom Osborne Field, and why not? Three national championships the last four years, I think they can name the entire state after him. From one legend to the next, Eddie Robinson taking part in pregame ceremonies a little bit earlier of the game, which is named in his honor. Of course, no college coach has won as many as 408 games. And there's another pretty good coach on the other side of the field. Louisiana Tech's Gary Croton. I'm sure Ron and Artie, you'll agree he's one of the best offensive minds going in sports today. Yes, he is, Eric. And I'll tell you, he is a good passing game coach. And this guy is a number to get a bigger job in the very near future. That is Trent Weirich, just a freshman out of Shreveport, Louisiana. He will be kicking off to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Louisiana Tech won the kick, but they deferred. Marty Gigantino, what about deferring it when you have such a high-powered offense? Don't you want the ball first? Well, of course you do, and I, I don't know why coaches think of these things, and I'm sure Gary had a good reason, but why would you give Nebraska another opportunity to possibly score? They're so powerful on offense, as we're going to talk about all day. Wiggins, Cheatham, and Walker are back for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Wireless kick, we have a whistle. We'll hold things up just a minute. I think one of the keys to beating Nebraska is to keep the ball away from them. Exactly. And I think when you give them too many opportunities. Game, kicking team, five yard three. It's at times self-defeating. 
well. Louisiana Tech starts off on the wrong foot with a penalty to start the game off. Our referee today, by the way, is Dale Newhouse. Jim Springer was supposed to be the official today, but his father, who is a great official, passed away. Our condolences to the Springer family. Artie, you knew his dad. I know his dad very well. Jack Springer, a longtime Pac-10 official and well-known throughout the college ranks. This is a great crew, though, that we have today. It's a Pac-10 crew that's done 71 ball games between them. 42-game home win streak for the Nebraska Cornhuskers here at Memorial Stadium and the newly appointed Tom Osborne Field, and Wyrick will try it again. A knuckleball, not a good kick. Nebraska should get good field position. Up to the 30-yard line was Joe Walker. At 15 returns, last year averaged just under 26 yards a return. There is Bobby Newcomb, the Sophomore quarterback out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Probably the best run pass threat here in Nebraska since Turner Gill. He is a dandy. He's got the numbers. He's got the legs. And he can do it. The line, four of five newcomers. Josh Heskew, the only returner in the wide receivers and running back for Nebraska. Joel Makavica, pound for pound, the best fullback in the country. First and 10, Nebraska on their own 30. Right up the middle to Makavica. Running room to watch. He was 11 yards short of 1,000, and I think he got it on his first carry of the afternoon. He is, like you said, the best fullback pound for pound in the country today. Let's take a look at that Louisiana Tech defense. They do give up a lot of yards. Their line is anchored by Desmond Nunnery, a defensive end who will be the key in containing that run of Nebraska. The linebackers, Quincy Stewart, just a sophomore, a great defensive mentality, and in the secondary, Roderick Pernetter. He's the key to the run support this afternoon. First and 10 for Nebraska. Newcomb's going to keep it. He pitches it back. It is Shevin Wiggins. He finds some running room and another first down for the Cornhuskers. You know, one of the things the Louisiana Tech coaches wanted to do today was stop McAvick and Bobby Newcomb and make Nebraska pitch the ball. But I tell you what, you've got to have enough people outside and inside the blockers on the perimeter to get to the pitch in time. One other thing you're seeing here, Ron, is Nebraska lines up four yards deep in the backfield. They're on the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Well, Louisiana Tech would like nothing better than to bend that offensive line of Nebraska. They picked up 12 on the first play, 12 on the second. Newcomb, second collegiate pass, wide open, touchdown Nebraska. is two for two in college throwing the football. That one covered 46 yards to tight end Sheldon Jackson. Nebraska does not throw the football very well, but when you're overplaying the run, they feel they've got a built-in advantage because you line up eight and nine on the line, stop the run, and then you are vulnerable to the forward pass. Chris Brown was 62 for 62 on point after his last year. He makes it 63 in a row. You know, talking to Frankie Solich and the offensive coaches yesterday, Nebraska feels that they do not throw the ball well in the obvious situations. But what they want to be able to do this year is surprise you like they did on this play. It's a bootleg type play, play action, and it's a wide open tight end, Sheldon Jackson right down the middle. Again, the defenders overplay the run. Perfect throw and a perfect catch by the big guy from Diamond Bar, California. And there's a happy guy. That's not a bad percentage as a college quarterback, two for two. And one touchdown. And one touchdown. Now Bobby Newcomb is happy and for good reason. And you know, one thing that Gary Croton told us yesterday was, he said, what worries me is we don't know how good his arm is. I think he just got a lesson in that. Well, if you go to practice, which we did the other day, and you watch this guy throw the football in practice, you come away saying he could play a lot of places in the United States as a drop back quarterback. He's extremely athletic and throws the ball very well. Well, Louisiana Tech will get a shot at it, but this is going out of the end zone. Last year, Brown, 65% of his kickoffs went out of the end zone, and he's 100% this year. 
There is the man, Tim Rattay, the junior out of Phoenix, Arizona. They call him the heart and soul of this team. He holds numerous records, set or tied 28 school records last year in his first year as a Division 1A quarterback. And the Louisiana Tech offensive line, Joey Schutz is the only returning starter on the line. The wide receivers and running back keep an eye on 5'6", Bobby Raytel. Rushed for 800 yards last year despite averaging just about 10 carries of all games. Rattay swings it out to the far side, and it is Troy Edwards who slips and falls. Look for Troy Edwards to get the ball as much as possible today. He is one of their best receivers. In, in fact, he's one of the best receivers in the United States. And the Nebraska defensive line, Chad Kelsey, played every game but one in his Nebraska career. He is the emotional leader of this team. Jay Foreman, son of Chuck Foreman, he is the center of the defense. And in the secondary, Ralph Brown is making his 26th consecutive start. Second down and eight to go for Louisiana Tech. Rattay again will put it up in the air, and the pass is incomplete from behind the receiver. Jay Foreman was there on the coverage. Kari Reynolds may have gotten a piece of it. One of the things Louisiana Tech is going to do today is put a lot of different formations at this Nebraska defense, and they are going to test the linebackers like Jay Foreman and like Eric Johnson and Brian Shaw, the three linebackers, on their pass coverage abilities. Gary Croton says they believe they can win, and they can move the football on Nebraska, but they're facing third and eight, and they were not a good third down team last year. Pass is complete at the 20 up to the 26-yard line, and Edwards is smothered over. And Louisiana Tech will be forced to punch Chad Kelsey coming from that left side to make the stop. Well, one of the things you want to do against Nebraska is get rid of the ball quickly. Three-step drops and a lot of screens. But the problem Louisiana Tech is going to have today is that wonderful mobility and great speed of that Nebraska defensive front. Walker, Wiggins, and Brown set to receive the punt from Kevin Pond. His first punt in college competition. A low spiral. It's going to be fielded by Walker at the 35. Looking for some running room up to the 40, a return of five after a 39-yard punt. And Nebraska will take over, leading 7-0 with 1241 left to play in the first. We'll be back to Lincoln, Nebraska right after this. It took Nebraska just three plays and 48 seconds to put numbers on the board for fearless Frankie Solich, as he was known. How about the keys for Nebraska, Coach? Well, I think the first thing Nebraska's got to do today on offense is take care of the football. It's an option team with a new quarterback. Early in the year, you're prone to fumble the ball. Take care of the ball. Second thing is play the play. Execute the Nebraska offense. Don't worry about the Louisiana Tech defense. And thirdly, the defense by Charlie McBride. you got to defend the inside passing game, the backs and the tight ends. Well, they were the 1997 NCAA rushing charge. Newcomb spins, gets away. Can he turn the corner? Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Otis Pitts did a nice job pressuring him. The 6-1 senior out of Bossier City, Louisiana. One of the things defensive coaches can't coach is a guy like a Bobby Newcomb who can make a negative play into a positive play. He creates a lot of big plays for this Nebraska offense, and he will in the next three years. He was so highly rec recruited. More speed and quickness, they say, than Scott Frost, and they also believe his arm is stronger than last year's quarterback. They gave him a yard on the play, second and nine for Nebraska at the 40. Newcomb's second pass of the afternoon, complete to Matt Davison, the hero of the Missouri game. It is extremely warm here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Eric Clemens, how hot is it? I don't want to joke, guys, but I'm with Gary Eisminger of Cold Front. They provided the cooling devices on both sidelines. He just took this thermometer off the field for us. It read 118 degrees. It's gone down a little bit because he brought it off the field, but it is really hot. Gary, uh, is it dangerous out here? Do your Cold Front things help? Typically, they're going to control the ambient air down to about 20 degrees lower than what it is out here. Okay, good enough. Well, they're staying cool on the sidelines. I'm going to try to do the same, Ron and Artie. The temperature went down because you were standing next to it, Eric. On the option again, Newcomb crosses the 50, takes a shot as he makes his way up to the 45. Damon Harrington coming from that linebacker spot to make the stop. It's a good defensive play that time by Harrington. What the middle linebacker has got to do in defending the option is to shuffle down the line of scrimmage and scrape up into the alley and tackle the quarterback who's got the ball. 
Now, Newcomb, as he comes down the line of scrimmage, does not see Harrington come, decides to tuck the ball underneath his arm and turn up the field. That was just an excellent defensive play. Now, when we talked about Bobby Newcomb, we have an official's timeout on the field. One word that the coaches kept using is tough. This guy can take the shots. He said he talked to Steve Taylor. He talked to Turner Gill, Scott Frost, and they all said, you're going to get hit running this offense, and he's ready for it. Davison in motion on second and seven. The pitch back, another first down for Nebraska. Again, Harrington putting the stop this time on Terrell Buckhalter, who's subbing for the injured D'Angelo Evans at his knee scope. Evans will miss probably three games. Buckholter is known as the big train. But I'll tell you, the big train can't run without the guys in front of him. Joel McAvicka, number 45, puts on a great block on the defensive end, Jared Purcell, and springs Buckholter into positive yardage. After a pickup of 13, Nebraska first and 10 on Louisiana Tech's 32-yard line. Newcomb changes the play. The quick pitch. The cutback again by Buck Calder makes his way to the 30-yard line, gets stacked up as he gets inside the 30. Otis Pitts on the tackle. And you know, Artie, they talked about Gary Croak and said, we've got to bend that offensive line of Nebraska. They are not doing it. Nebraska is getting the, the, the best of that. Well, you know what happens, though? It's easier said than done. Nebraska's got a bunch of big guys up in there. And you're going to see what happens. Bobby Newcomb should have carried out the pitch fake a little bit more. I thought he pitched the ball a little bit too soon. And as a result, Buckholder was surprised. I think he got the ball quicker than he thought he was. Second and six, 10.45 left in the first. Nebraska leading 7-0. First man through, tripped up, Makovica. What a great story, Joel Makovica. The walk-on, he grew up on a farm. His brother played here. I think the best thing about him is besides the fact that he's never lost a yard in his career, you know, he, he reminds me of a guy like a Tom Rathman or somebody, but this guy played eight-man football in high school. Of course, an eight-man football, who cares about everybody else? <laughs> he's still got a fullback, so he was perfect for that offense, and he's perfect for this offense. Third and four for Nebraska. They were 54% on third down chances last year. Newcomb showing some patience. He keeps it. Crosses the 25 down to the 24. He'll be short of the first down by about a yard. Jared Bosell, the junior from Bossier City, Louisiana, who Gary Croton said had a great summer practice so far on the stop. Well, you know, Nebraska got disrupted a little bit that time, but give the credit to the defensive front from Louisiana Tech, because one of the things you have to do as a defensive lineman against option football is penetrate and make that quarterback get off his course. That's exactly what happened that time, Ron. Fourth and two. Last year, Nebraska 54% on fourth down. Makovica in motion. The second man through, tripped up. It's going to be close. Buck Calder, not sure if he stretched ahead. Rattay's coming out. Louisiana Tech doesn't think they got it. Officials say, you're wrong. He did. One of the keys to Nebraska's success in the rushing game for the last 15 years has been the three guys inside, the two guards in the center. And they do a wonderful job that time of giving Buckholter enough room to turn and get up the field for the first down. But it's those big old guys inside. I used to call them the hogs, but these guys block like trucks. Buckholter's a big pack, too, at 6'2", almost 230 pounds. They're just pounding it straight ahead on the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. You know, when you watch this offense of Nebraska, if you keep your eyes on the fullback and you keep your eyes on the two guards, they will take you to the football each and every time. Because one of the tricks in this offense is to get more blockers at the point of attack than defenders. And that's why the fullback here has got to be not a good blocker, Ron. He's got to be a sensational blocker. Frank Solich in his first year taking over for Tom Osborne. Will be 54 in just over a week. Second and seven, balls on the 19, one back set, timeout's gonna be called by Nebraska. So Bobby Newcomb is gonna go over and talk to Solich about it. Already leading seven nothing in case you just joined us. 
Nebraska's took 48 seconds to put points on the board, and that's where we are right now. It's the Eddie Robinson Classic coming your way from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's time now for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's check in with Kevin Frazier. Thanks a lot, guys. Big baseball news. The Atlanta Braves take it on the St. Louis Cardinals. The home run launch the chase for Maris Bob on the first. Big Max first at bat. He thought he was walked by Tom Glavitt. No, it's a strikeout. He's upset with umpire Sam Holbrook. You see the pitch again. Very, very low. McGuire argues he ends up getting tossed. And the Cardinals lose that one for three. Let's go back to the guys in the booth. All right, Coral Buckhalter, the only setback. He's got the football running room. The goal line is five yards away. He's one yard short. Roderick Pernetter had to hold on for dear life. A little bit of a counterplay. Now watch the right side of the Nebraska offensive line. Guard get Ben Gesford leads up into the hole, and there is no one there to tackle Corell Buckholder. He breaks a tackle, makes a couple extra yards on his own, but you've got to give all the credit, Ron, up front to those oh, big yeah. offensive linemen. And I think the people that question this new offensive line are getting some answers right now. First and goal for the Huskers. Pounding it over the right side will not hit Pater. You know, you look at this offensive line, and yes, they have only one starter back, Hescu to center, but the other four guys have been in the program for three and four years. I don't think they're a question mark. I just I just term them as inexperienced exactly. in game time. But they've been here, they've been back up, they played in games before. 17 players have at least one year experience. Buck Calder in the eye formation. Second and goal. Ball's on the two for Nebraska, leading 7-0. Louisiana Tech dancing around on the line of scrimmage. Newcomb is going to keep it, loses it, and that's going to be a late hit on Louisiana Tech. Penalty flag is thrown. Bobby came out on the corner that time, and he looks like he was indecisive whether to pitch the ball or not. And as a result, he lost a handle on the football. He's got to make a sure decision and not be indecisive. Indeed, the penalty goes against Louisiana Tech. But that is one of the reasons I think Frank Solich took this game. And everybody said, why would you want to play another preseason type game? He said, listen, I want guys like Newcomb to get some reps. Well, he's football. right about that. Late hit. Late hit. First down. But also for his offensive line to gel. But it's another home game here for the people of Nebraska. So I think a lot of things went into that decision. Plus, quite honestly, he couldn't wait to get the season started because he knows he's got some big shoes to fill. Now we asked him numerous occasions. We said, Frank, are you nervous? He said, no, not really. He's pretty low key. Finally gives Nebraska a first and goal, by the way. I didn't believe him. He was a little yeah, nervous. Yeah. Makovic in the fullback spot. Joel Makovic, does he get in? I don't think he did. No signal from the officials yet. Makovic came in just two touchdowns away from the all-time record for touchdowns for a fullback. Didn't get it. You know, another solid job by the defensive line of Louisiana Tech. Jerome King, number 99, Otis Pitts, number 94. The coaches at Louisiana Tech think these guys are outstanding football players, and they could win the war today inside for Louisiana Tech against this Nebraska offensive line. And Louisiana the Tech. Right now. Louisiana first. Tech calls a timeout. Todd Bradford, their defensive coordinator, wants to talk about it. This team is down 7-0. He told us last night that if this Nebraska team starts to run on them successfully, they are in big trouble. Well, that's what you got to do. You've got to control the run of Nebraska. But he was very realistic and said, even if they get up 21 to nothing or 28 to nothing, you cannot let the tidal wave of these people in red here and this big Nebraska football team just bury you. You've got to hang in there even if they get up and not get buried.
every night on Fox Sports Net, it's Fox Sports News Primetime. All the scores, all the highlights, and all the breaking stories covering your home team seven nights a week. We are there. Fox Sports News Primetime every night on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listing. Nebraska second and goal. Ball is on the one. 558 left to play here in the opening quarter. Newcomb's going to keep it himself. Lunges forward. Should be a touchdown. Still no signal from the officials. He looked like there it is. Touchdown, Bobby Newcomb in Nebraska. His second collegiate touchdown rushing the football. Intelligent call that time by Frank Solich because what you don't want to have happen is Newcomb get out on the corner on an option and maybe fumble the ball or pitch it poorly again. So do the conservative thing, let him quarterback sneak up inside behind that big center Josh Heskew and go in for the score. I think that's intelligent by Frank Solich, but what it also does, it calms Bobby Newcomb down a little bit. And Chris Brown, the senior out of South Lake, Texas who will be one of the Lou Groza finalists probably this year. Straight through the middle, and he keeps his record perfect. Now Bobby Newcomb has scored, and Frank Solich in his debut has a 14-0 lead, 5-49. Left to play in the second. Now. 14-0, Nebraska leading Louisiana Tech. We're still in the first. That scoring drive was good, and it's the, the key play. Well, on fourth down here, what happens? Willie Miller's in at fullback number 15. He throws a key block, which allows Buckler to get the first down. And here's the quarterback sneak by Bobby Newcomb. But again, it's those big people up front that plow the way into the end zone for Bobby Newcomb. Brown again to kick it off. His first one win in the end zone. Troy Edwards and Larry Wright set to receive it. There's a little bit of a breeze this afternoon going from your left to right. And again, say bye-bye to that. And Louisiana Tech will have the ball first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. One of the best ways to have a great kickoff cover team is not to allow the opponent to yeah. return the ball. And there's a little bit of a wind in here, and that ball is going to go into the end zone and out of the end zone each and every time. Now, for Louisiana Tech today, Ron, I think on offense they've got to get at least 75 snaps, and hopefully they can convert them to a couple of touchdowns. And the last thing is they've got to keep competing, and what I talked about before, not collapse when Nebraska gets the lead. Bobby Ray Tell in the backfield, they fake it. Rattay looking up top, lost the pass, it is incomplete, no penalty play. Intended for James Jordan, the redshirt freshman out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Mike Brown was on the coverage. Jordan is a player that Gary Croton has high expectations for. Well, he's 6'3", he's 225 pounds, and the ball just gets away from him a little bit. Tim Rattay has just got to put the ball a little bit more on the money, and that would have been a completion for the big freshman. Edwards goes wide to the left on second and 10. Rattay again, this is their trademark, a little bit of a screen pass to Edwards. Crosses the 30, he is stacked up right at the 30-yard line. Ralph Brown, the junior from Hacienda Heights, California, there to make the stop. There is a classic Louisiana Tech play. This play is what they call a middle screen. This is something that is very prominent in this Louisiana Tech offense. The wide receiver comes back in towards the line of scrimmage where the center was and catches the easy pass. And the objective of the play, Ron, is to go against the pursuit of the defense. Louisiana Tech runs that play as good as anybody in the United States. Pickup of nine sets up a third down in one situation. Louisiana Tech only 38%. Nobody in the backfield. Look at this formation. They flip it to the side. It's a first down to Edwards. Everybody was lined up to the right. Edwards was lined up to the left. He got the snap on the first. Nice little swing and gate pass, huh? Louisiana Tech came into the game with this is called their Husker formation. Now you got the center right here, the quarterback here, three receivers over there. This is called a trick formation. And all they're trying to do is keep Nebraska's defense off balance and have to think about getting lined up. 
They have over 50 formations in their repertoire. Bobby Ray Tell trying to get to the outside, and a sea of red jerseys drops him at the 29. Joe Walker led the charge. We are at the Eddie Robinson Classic in Lincoln, Nebraska. First consecutive sellout, Nebraska struck early. They struck quickly. And with 4-11 left in the first, the Huskers lead Louisiana Tech 14-0, along with Artie Gigantino, Eric Clemens, Kevin Frazier, Hall of Famer Kellen Winslow. I'm Ron Thulin. Glad you were with us on this Saturday afternoon as we kick off our college football coverage here on Fox Sports Net. A loss of five on the play. Rete, the straight drop over the middle, wide open, pass incomplete. Paul Jenkins had it, couldn't wrap it up. And that's what I was talking about in the keys for Nebraska, that they've got to do a great job of defending the inside passing game of Louisiana Tech. The slot, the tight end, and the backs running inside routes because Nebraska, quite frankly, has got great corners. So they're going to be able to cover the wide-out passing game of Louisiana Tech that Nebraska's got to do a good job of stopping today. Third down and long for Louisiana Tech, and Nebraska is doing exactly what they wanted to do, get Louisiana Tech off schedule. Delwyn Degree in motion, and Louisiana Tech's going to have to burn a timeout. Timeout. That is their second timeout Louisiana used Tech, in the opening quarter. Their second. You know, when you have a lot of formations and you have 12 different personnel groups, which is exactly what Louisiana Tech has, sometimes it gets confusing to the quarterback. That's exactly what happened there. Because part of Louisiana Tech's game plan is to use 12 different personnel groups, again, to confuse the Nebraska defense. Eric Clemens is on the sideline by the Louisiana Tech Ben, Sheriff, what do you have for us? Well, guys, even though the score is 14 to nothing, everybody on the Louisiana Tech bench standing at attention, watching and relying on that powerful offense of theirs to get things going. That drop pass on first down hurt them, but they're still confident they can score some points and stay in this game. Well, they had a potent offense last year for that man right there, Gary Croton, in his third year. <laughs> Well, next week on College Football Saturday, Tim Couch leads Kentucky against arch rival Louisville. Then the Fighting Illini take on Washington State, and Washington travels to Tempe to meet the top 10 ASU Sun Devils. Check your local listings for the games in your area. Now, Gary Croton said, listen, Boston College beat number five Penn State a few years ago. There's no reason why we can't win here. This team still believes it facing third and 15. Rotata Edwards at the 28. He is going to be dropped after a pickup of about two. What a play by Ralph Brown from that right cornerback spot. He was the first freshman to start at a position since World War II. You know, that's why he's a great player. He not only can cover, but he can come up in the open field and make a big-time tackle. He's a great, great player. You're going to see him here come into your screen and make the short tackle in the open field. That's hard to do on a good athlete like Edwards. Bond with his second punt. First one was 39. This one, Nebraska almost got a piece of it. Fair catch is going to be called at the 37-yard line after a 33-yard kick, and that's where Nebraska... We'll take over once again. Let's talk about the maturity we've seen so far of Bobby Newcomb. The coaches keep telling us, here's a guy that they'd show up at 7 o'clock in the morning this summer, and Frank Solich said, I'd go to unlock the door. Newcomb would be standing there waiting to get in to look at the film. Well, he wanted to be the Nebraska quarterback. In fact, a year ago when I was here doing the game, Tom Osborne told me in confidence that that guy, who was the wingback at the time, Bobby Newcomb, would probably be his quarterback for the next three years. Dan Alexander now in the I formation, backing up Buck Calder. They go right up the middle again and again. Nebraska blowing a big hole open. This time for Willie Miller, the sophomore out of Omaha, Nebraska. Had 10 carries for 49 yards last year. Well, like their eye backs, they like to alternate fullbacks. The second team fullback, Billy Legate is injured, so big old Willie Miller steps up. As you said, he's a sophomore from Omaha, 230 pounds, and believe me, he might not be as good today as Joel Makovica, but someday he will be. Oh, yes, he's still a youngster. Pickup of 6, 225 to play here in the first. Newcomb looks to put it up in the air. Pass is complete. 
T.J. DeBate, the junior tight end from Stewartville, Minnesota. DeBates could not wait to get to this ball game. He fumbled the onside kick against Colorado last year that made that game close. He couldn't wait to get back in action. Well, one thing about DeBates, and he lines up right here as a tight end, you're going to see a bootleg come to his side, and he's just going to go down the field and run an out pattern. But this is a guy who scored 44 touchdowns in high school as a running back. Now he's grown into just another Cornhusker tight end. First and ten for Nebraska, inside of two minutes to play here in the first. Apke in motion, Newcomb. Nice job keeping his balance. Dan Alexander struggling to pick up some yards, and he gets about five on the play. Dan Alexander is a big guy at six foot, 250 pounds. The only thing they say about him, they want him to take care of the ball. Well, there's a real Cornhusker fan with some you. corn growing out of his ears, a little shades on, and number one tattooed or whatever that is in white on his cheek. I think he's fired up, Ron. I think everybody was. Pick up a five, second and five as we close in on one minute left here in the first quarter. Kenny Cheatham wide to the left, Frankie London on the near side. Or in the slot. The fullback, Macca, or Willie Miller, bouncing off tackles, makes his way down to the 25. I think he's bucking for some playing time, too, Coach. Well, he's going to get some this year. Frank Solich was the running back coach here before he became the head football coach. Dave Gillespie from the University of Kansas is the new running back coach. These people here have always coached what I call violent running, which means that you have to sometimes knock a defender down while you're running the football. That was a wonderful example of a fullback violent running. And this is classic Nebraska football. Run, 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 and mix in a pass. Newcomb's going to throw it up. Scrambling around, he's got some running room. Fights his way down to the 25-yard line. Before Quincy Stewart, the 6-1 sophomore out of Tyler, Texas, made the stop. And, you know, you talk to the... Uh, coaches that I are at the Louisiana Tech and they say we need a guy to make the big play. They lost all their big play guys that following graduation last year and they really are counting on Quincy Stewart number 53. Well he's taken the place of a good linebacker by the name of Myron Smith who's with the Oakland Raiders right now and ironically they call that position the zip linebacker and he's got some zip Quincy Stewart does to play that spot. Pickup of six. Newcomb kicks it back. Alexander looking for some running room. He's going to be stacked up after a pickup of about three on the play. Larry Wright comes up from that free safety spot, the senior out of Monroe, Louisiana. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter, but what a vintage first quarter for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They hang 14 on the board, and as we head to quarter number two, Nebraska 14, Louisiana Tech, nothing. One hundred and seventy four yards offense for Nebraska in the opening 15 minutes. They lead 14 nothing. Dan Alexander, the lone man in the backfield behind Bobby Newcomb. Third down and two for the Huskers. Alexander follows his blockers over the right side down to the 15 will be close to the first down. That's one of the new formations Nebraska put in this year. Two tight ends, one back, and two wide receivers lined up to the right or left. That was a counter play, and it's a difficult play to stop. Frankie Solich loves to run the option, but he also loves to run the counter and the isolation play up inside. He used to be a fullback. Look at the yardage difference. Alexander and Miller in the backfield. The pads are popping as he crosses down the 15 down to the 13-yard line for Dan Alexander. You know, one thing about Louisiana Tech, although the score's a little lopsided and the yardage is right now, they felt pretty good, and they were loose coming into this game, especially yesterday. And remember the other thing, Ron, heat should not be a problem with them because, believe me, it's just as hot in Louisiana as it is here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Boy, their temperature humidity index hovers around 115 to 120. 
Second down and eight after the pickup of two. Nebraska can get a first down. How difficult is it for Louisiana Tech to play this option type of football? Because they don't practice against it during the week. I think that's the most difficult thing to do in your preparation is to simulate what the Nebraska option is going to look like and the speed of it. In fact, their third quarterback, Brian Stallworth, was Bobby Newcomb. For Newcomb keeps it, looks for the pitch man. Alexander, the right side, inside the 10, down to about the seven yard line. Larry Wright upends him. Larry Wright, who started at Louisiana Tech as a wide receiver. Boy, Alexander is impressive. And you know, you talk to Buck Alder and Alexander, and with D'Angelo Evans out, both players realize there is an opportunity to show the coaches what they can do. Right, and the coaches were not nervous about Alexander playing this game, but they were concerned about his fumbling a little bit. And he's a big guy, he's six foot, he's 250 mm -hmm. pounds, and he runs a 4-5. That's an impressive physical specimen. Third and three, Lance Brown in motion. The fullback, Roy Miller, does he get in? Touchdown, Nebraska! <laughs> well, Frank Solich still looks nervous, but I think some of the pressure has been relieved. You know, Willie Miller's not really a secret. He had a big run in this final spring game of 41 yards. That was just a handoff and a belly up inside. But he's a Mack truck, and once he gets going, he's a tough guy to tackle. Chris Brown will try to make it three of three. Snap is good, the kick is good. 13.05 left in quarter number two. Willie Miller takes it in eight yards, and Nebraska throwing a shot out at Louisiana Tech. Now Willie Miller has a career high rushing three carries 24 yards and that has helped Nebraska to a 21 nothing lead and we are just about two minutes into quarter number two and I'll tell you Todd Bradford's getting a work out there on his defense because they just gave up 63 yards on 10 plays. Well he wanted to take some chances today by stunning the defensive linemen and trying to get penetration. The problem with Nebraska you can't blitz them because they run the ball right at you and sometimes that hurts more than help. Chris Brown making it three for three into the end zone. And again, Louisiana Tech, no field position to start the game so far. The third time, they'll begin first and 10 on their own 20. Now, Chris Brown, obviously an All-American candidate, as you mentioned, a, probably a Lou Groza finalist. He has turned out to be a dandy for the Nebraska Cornhuskers out of Texas. Let's talk about Tim Rattay for a minute. Everybody knows that he throws a lot of numbers. Here's a guy who's never thrown for less than 269 yards a game, Artie. You know, and this offense is perfect for him because it's a high percentage completion offense that does a lot of different things, things schematically. The quick toss to the outside. And boy, Nebraska covers it up after a pickup of about three on the play. Gary Croton calls Tim Rattay magical. He better be David Copperfield this afternoon. Yeah, I call this guy right here, Chad Kelsey, magical because this guy plays at 100 miles an hour on every play. He's a 100% full speed football player. That's why he's the team captain. That's why he'll be an All-American this year. And he just made a fantastic play. Four wide receivers, Edwards on the near side. Rattay on second and seven, looking for Edwards overthrown. Again, good coverage by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Aaron Sweeney was right there. The sophomore out of right here in Lincoln, Nebraska. You know, and he started nine games a year ago, one of six true freshmen to play. He is a wonderful cover guy. And Tim Rattay today has got to do a better job of getting the ball inside because I don't think he can throw the ball, Ron, outside to the wide receivers because Sweeney and Ralph Brown are such good cover men. Well, Gary Curry says he wanted to create a new game inside the corners. It's not been successful so far. Third and seven. Right over the middle. The big hit is put on James Jordan, but he hangs on to it. And that'll be a first down, and he gives the I'm okay pickup of 10 on the play. What a hit. 
Now, this is one of their formations that they talked about. They've got five wide receivers in the game, and old Jordan's lined up here, but the other four wide receivers are right there. It's called an empty formation because there's no backs in the backfield. It's a quick slant to Jordan, and he pays the price. Edwards and Jenkins to the left. To Edwards. He's got some running room over the 50. Down to the 43-yard line, and Mike Brown throws them, and Troy Edwards is never short of words. He loves talking to opponents. He says, the more I talk, the matter I get, the matter I get, the better I play. Louisiana Tech, excuse me, Ron, Louisiana Tech has got to continue to do this. Get the ball outside and make downfield blocks, like right there, to help the wide receivers get up the field. That's excellent wide receiver blocking. That's what Gary Croton was hoping for. First and 10, Rattay, near side. Pass complete, tripped up at the 39 is Delwyn Dagry. The redshirt freshman of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They like his outside speed because they think once he gets outside, he's tough to catch. The way you beat Nebraska is just what Louisiana Tech is doing right now. You line up 54 yards across the field, you spread Nebraska out, and you kind of dink him to death, Ron. Mm -hmm. Short pass here, short pass here, up and down the field. Pickup of only two on the play. Bobby Raytel tries the right side. He doesn't get much. They wanted to run the ball a little bit today. They think Bobby Raytel is better than his size of five foot six. Well, he reminds the coaches of a guy like a David, David Meggett type and a Glenn Milburn type. A little guy with great balance. He's 5'6", he's 200 pounds, he's hard to knock down. He's a dangerous player, especially on AstroTurf. Another third down, this time it's three for Nebraska, or for uh, Louisiana Tech. Simon and Wilson in the backfield. Rattay across the middle, pass is complete. Sean Cangelosi, the sophomore out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That should be good enough for another Louisiana Tech first down. Rattay showed a great deal of poise on this play. Well, you know, that's the one thing the coaches love about this guy. He's, he's dangerous to a defense in the face of pressure. He's a cool customer there. Those are the numbers and the records that Rattay set last year. Nine 300-yard passing games. Terry, you only had seven. <laughs> I think Terry was handing the ball off a little bit more in those days. Now Louisiana Tech's first sustained drive. Rattay, no place to go. Makes lemonade out of lemons. Is he able to get three on the play? The coaches compare him to Doug Flutie, who used to play at Boston College. In fact, the offensive line coach is Jack McNell III, who was the center for Doug Flutie in the heydays at Boston College. A lot of these coaches, including Croton, have some Boston College background. But they think this guy is very much in leadership and ability like a Doug Flutie. Already three times as many yards on this drive as they had in the previous drive. Second down and seven for Tech. Rattay inside the 20, complete to David Newman, the former backup quarterback to Rattay. He's a big target at six foot seven. Now Terry Bradshaw on the sideline looking things over. Terry, of course, the star of Fox Sports coverage of the NFL. And he will be with Kevin Frazier at halftime. Looking forward to that. Kevin probably will say hi, Terry, and we'll say another word the rest of halftime. <laughs> I'm just going out on a limb on that one. Uh, Ron Fulham said that. Hey, I'm a Pittsburgh boy. I can say that. <laughs> He's a great one. He was a great one. He's one of the great people, I think, in this broadcasting industry. First and ten, Louisiana Tech inside the red zone. They're showing some poise. Rattay looking for Pater. Pass picked away at the last second. What a great play by Ralph Brown. He has a career record for passes broken up already, and he's adding to it. You know, Ralph Brown comes from California, from Bishop Abbott High School in Hacienda Heights, one of the great programs in all of California. And he told me once he wanted to come to Nebraska because he thought Nebraska was the best football program in the country. This guy's one of the best football players in the country at this great program. This guy is an All-American star. Second down and 10. Gagri bouncing his way inside the 15 down to the 13-yard line before Joe Walker comes up from the rover spot to make the hit. 
El Rete on this drive already shown some success. How about seven of nine for just about 59 yards? Well, this was their game plan going into this game, to keep the ball, spread out Nebraska, and keep them off balance. You know, when we talk about Gary Croton, the head coach and the offensive coordinator, he's got a BYU background. He's coached with Lavelle Edwards and Mike Holmgren and Jack McNell, some of the great passing coaches in the country. Crowd getting a little lancy, third and four. Pass is complete. Down to the six-yard line is James Jordan again, and the redshirt freshman showing why Gary Croton was singing his praises yesterday. And that's Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator. He has not been pleased with his team's scrimmages leading up to this opener. You know, it was interesting, and we were talking to him, but he called his football team after the second scrimmage this past fall sluggish, slow, and fat. Now, I thought he was talking about you and me, <laughs> but not his defensive football team because Nebraska is known for their agility, their mobility, and their speed on defense. But you're right. He was not happy with their productivity in this past scrimmage camp. They can't. First and goal. Ball is on the five for Tech. Into the end zone and hit the turf. Edwards couldn't scoop it up. As for Tim Rattay, intended for number 16, Troy Edwards, calling it the I think Rattay may have taken a shot on that play. That will bring up second goal with the ball on the five-yard line. Big old Steve Warren's going to come into the picture, and he just flattens it. Now, you got to remember something. Warren is six foot one, 305 pounds, with a 13% body fat. That is a load knocking Rete down to the ground. D'Angelosi has checked into the lineup. Second down and goal, ball on the five. Bobby Raychell in the backfield with Rattay. Down to the one, pass is complete to Degree. That'll set up a third down and goal. Three-step drops, quick hitches, high percentage passes. Obviously, Louisiana Tech has settled down a little bit and got into a rhythm. Now, the problem for Nebraska, though, Nebraska's playing nickel right now, Ron, which has four defensive linemen, two linebackers, and five defensive backs in the game, and they're a little bit out of whack and off balance. On third and goal, Rattay looking for somebody back in the end zone. Pass incomplete, overthrown, intended for six foot seven David Newman. He needed about three more inches. Well, Sweeney did a good job of covering him. And like you said, Sweeney's only six foot, but Newman is six foot seven. I love the play selection down in the red zone. Throw the ball up in the air to a big six foot seven tight end. Charlie McBride has to be smiling, but he's got one more play to go because Louisiana Tech is going for it. Bobby Ray Tell has come back in along with James Jordan. Fourth down and goal from the one. Rattay pressures on, touchdown Louisiana Tech. Sean Cangelosi, the sophomore out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They say he has huge hands. He's not afraid to catch it in the crowd. And those attributes were evident on that play. You know, another guy that's kind of a different wide receiver. He's six foot four, 210, 215 pounds and he's a big target down in the end zone. I like that thought process, Ron, of throwing to your bigger receivers in the end zone and in the red zone area. Very impressive drive for Louisiana Tech. Kevin Pond, the junior college transfer, his first Division I point after attempt, and he clinks it. Clinked it off the goalpost. It's a dead ball, no place to go on that. But Tim Rattay did the job on that drive as they covered over 70 yards. He was 10 of 14 throwing the football, and Gary Croton can smile in the face of pressure. But Nebraska's lead is still at 15. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium, Lincoln, Nebraska. Eric Clements along with Ron Thulin and Artie Gian Gigantino. And it is the Eddie Robinson Classic, and Eddie Robinson was honored by Nebraska's governor earlier this week. Well, Coach Robinson, it's really an honor to welcome you to genuine Nebraska. Uh, in addition to having a great football team, you may be interested in knowing that we have also had a great Navy since the 1930s. 
And this certificate... Nebraska Governor Ben Nelson, on behalf of the genuine Nebraska Boosters, is proud to present Coach Eddie Robinson with an honorary admiralship from the Navy of the great state of Nebraska. Yesterday, Coach Robinson joins a list that includes Teddy Roosevelt, Jack Benny, Bing Crosby, and Bob Hope as recipients of the honorary admiralship, one of many honorary awards for Eddie Robinson, Ron and Artie. All right, Eric Beck's law. This is Joe Walker at about the two-yard line. Has some running room. Look out. Goodbye. They do it on their first game this year. You know, Walker had 185 yards last year against Missouri in kickoff returns. He's fast. He's their starting safety today. Last year, he was their starting nickel. As a freshman, he's a dangerous football player, but the guys blocking for him, Ron, are the key. Nebraska is so deep. They've got so many good athletes in this program. That's why their special teams are so dominant each and every year is because their kicking teams, which are made up of their backups, are extremely talented. Now, Louisiana Tech has just gone from the mountaintop, exciting about being able to score on Nebraska, to the Valley, getting it put right back in their teeth. I think one of the keys to getting a kickoff return started is to get a wedge and give the return guy, which is Walker over here, a chance to get started. And that's exactly what happens. Nebraska does a fantastic job right there of starting the wedge and get going up the field. And Walker, as you're going to see here, breaks one tackle and then goes the distance untouched. But it's him catching the ball and having speed, but it's those other guys just clearing the way for him to score the touchdown. Wonderful, wonderful execution of a kickoff return, and Ron Thulin take that from an ex-special teams coach in the National Football League. That was just beautiful. Now that's the first kickoff return for the Huskers since 1990 at Tyrone Hughes. So add Mr. Walker's name into the Nebraska record books. And again, Chris Brown is going to kick it off. And for Louisiana Tech, talk about demoralizing. Let's see how they respond after that very impressive drive. And Chris Brown again. He's going to keep his record perfect this afternoon. Fans want Edwards to return it. He knows better. What a weapon is that for Chris Brown, able to just kick it in the end zone time after time. You know, the, the key to me in having great special teams is the guy and the place kicker on PADs and field goals, but it's the punter. That enables your coverage football teams to do a good job if you know where the ball is going. Frankie Solich has been an offensive coach his entire life, but he knows the importance of great special teams here in Nebraska. Well, Louisiana Tech's got to show something now. Rote, straight drop back over the middle, and he bounces it in front of Sean Cangelosi. Now it's time for another Dr. Pepper game break. Let's send it down to Kevin Frazier. Guys, one other game being played today. That's the BCA Classic. Michigan State hosting Colorado State. Second quarter, Cedric Irvin, 17 yards out. He finds the promised land. The current score, 16-6, Michigan State taking care of business in East Lansing. Ron. All right, Sonny Lubick for the new quarterback since Moses Moreno of Colorado State graduated. Penalty flag. And I tell you, he's got two 1,000-yard rushers in the backfield for the Rams. And Sonny Lubick's going to do a good job again this year. And they got a big game next week against Colorado. Third snap. Ball start. Offense. I, I tell you what, though, uh, Kevin and Ron, I think that Nick Saban's got a, a sleeper football team there in Michigan State. They really play good on defense. They do an excellent job with Urban of running the football, and I think they're going to make a mark this year in the Big Ten. Well, David Newman is the man who jumped off sides for or Gary Croton. They'll back it up five, second and 15. 6.43 left to play in the half. Nebraska leads it 28-6. to 
Bobby Ray Trell in the backfield over Tay again. Putting it up top intended for Edwards, complete. Still on his feet as he inches his way up to the 25. Erwin Sweeney stood him up. Chad Kelsey came in to clean things up. Now that was a good example that time of making Nebraska defend the entire field. He throws the ball outside to Edwards and really tries to stretch the defense. Edwards does a little turnaround, sees he's got a chance to slip outside, does, and the ball is right on the money. That is a wonderful example of the style of this offense. That was picture perfect, Ron Thorne. Well, Nebraska. Had some success on third down for Louisiana Tech early, but Louisiana Tech is three for their last three. Rete swings it out to the left side, pass is complete, and it will be well short of a first down. Jordan again on the reception, and again Louisiana Tech will be forced to punt. This Nebraska defense for years has the ability to demoralize an opponent. Well, you know, last year they were fourth in rushing defense, fifth in total, and 12th in scoring defense. They've got fast athletes that really get after you. In fact, it wasn't too long ago, it was seven years ago, Ron, that they changed their entire defensive philosophy here and went to the speedy 4-3 look as opposed to the old 52 look. Snap is low, the kick is high. Fair catch is going to be called for right at the 35-yard line. Good kick, 41 yards. And with 5-13 left to play in the first half, the Huskers have the ball and the lead. Welcome back to Lincoln. Want to remind you that coming up on the Marriott Halftime Report, my partner Kellen Winslow will be here, and we will have analysis of the game. Plus, the winningest coach in college football history, Eddie Robinson, will be right here on the set, and so will Terry Bradshaw from Fox NFL Sunday. And, you know, Terry also happened to play a little quarterback at Louisiana Tech. That's all coming up at halftime from Lincoln. Terry right now trying to keep cool. Let's go back up to Ron. Thank you, Kevin Frazier. 12 straight opening day victories for Nebraska trying to make it 13. Makovica straight up the middle, picks up about three on the play. Talk about that offensive line, Artie. They grow into being an offensive lineman here in Nebraska. Well, yeah, they work together, and, you know, they've got, like, in the last five years, seven players now in the National Football League. These guys are a product of the system. I think they've got the best offensive line coach in the United States, in Bill Tennifer, who's just been here for 25 years, and he knows exactly what to coach in this system. Pickup of three sets up a second and seven. Newcomb to Buckhalder, bouncing his way. Another first down for Nebraska. Jared Procell finally makes the stop. And you know, Ron, because of their offensive line, their rushing attack in the 90s has been consistently not good, but great. You look one, two, three, four, five times in the 90s, they have led the nation in rushing offense because of that offensive line. That's why they've averaged 35 or more points 12 straight years. Newcomb dropping back. He's had success. Jackson wide open. 10-5. One. Sheldon Jackson already has a TD catch, almost made it number two. How did he get so wide open, Artie? Well, when they throw the football, when you least expect it, you're going to see him line up right here and watch Bobby Newcomb's footwork in the backfield and his ball handling. It's a play-action pass. Nobody covers Jackson. Newcomb sees him and just puts the ball right into his hand. Now, the big guy from Diamond Bar, he's going to take some ribbon, Ron, from his teammates. He's going <laughs> to score on that. Well, the crowd booed when they saw the replay. Newcomb keeps it. He's not going anywhere. Well, let's see if 76,000-plus, who are wearing red, we might add, if they were correct on the call. Let's see where Jackson finally touched down. He catches the ball. He turns up the field. He stumbles a little bit there. Come on, big fella. Get in the end zone. But you know what, Ron? He shouldn't turn around and look. Keep going for the end zone. And I don't think he got in. I think the Pac-10 crew was right. Kellen Winslow would have gotten in on that. <laughs> Probably would have. <laughs> Big Kelly, when he was playing for the Missouri Tigers, he would have gotten in on that yeah, one. After watching him eat a few steaks, though, last night, I don't think he would have today. <laughs> Maybe no. way back then. 
There's where the ball sits. Nebraska leading 28 to 6, 346 to play here in quarter number two. That's the beauty of this offense, though. You run, you pound, you run the option, and then when you least expect it, the defense least expects it, boom, you hit them with a big pass. And that just goes to show you the ability of Bobby Newcomb to throw the football. Makovica and Miller. Makovica in motion. Buckholder, did he get in? No signal from the officials. Louisiana Tech doing a nice job on the line. That'll set up a third and goal. Big old 94, Otis Pitts. He is a very strong player at that nose guard position. He had some knee problems last year. They really need him to continue to step up today. Well, the Big O is the strongest football player on this Louisiana Tech football team, and he showed it right there. Bobby Gray, number 43, a redshirt freshman, 6'1", 200 pounds. He came up and put his pads on the ball carrier. Makovic and Buck Calder, Newcomb keeps, waiting for the signal. Still none given. There it is. Touchdown, Nebraska. Two forty-one to play in a half. Frank Solich is up thirty-four to six. You know, he told us the other day. Said, "I'm not out here to make. It. I'm just here to win a football game." Showing that today. This is a very business-like approach today, Ron, from the University of Nebraska. And the one thing I liked about I was here for three days visiting with the players and coaches. They didn't spend the off-season celebrating the Pro National Championship. They got themselves ready and went about their business. Now well, the key play of that drive once again went for the Big Ten. Sheldon, Big tight end Sheldon Jackson had covered 48 yards. You know, people should not forget about this guy. He had four receptions for 56 yards in the Orange Bowl this past year. He can catch the football. He's a big guy. He will play in the National Football League as a tight end in the very near future. In case you just joined us, our game summary, here it is with Eric Clemens. All right, guys. Well, the story of this game so far, 256 to be Newcomb leading the way at quarterback. We all thought he was going to be a great player, and he certainly has turned out to be, especially those couple of completions to Sheldon Jackson. Tim Rattain, meanwhile, not his usual self running the Louisiana Tech offense. The total yards again, 256 to 107. That's why we have a 35-6 score right now, Artie and Ron. You know, Eric, one thing, though, he's, run, he's had a few drops now. A couple yep. times, Louisiana Tech wide receivers and tight ends have been open and have had a chance to catch the ball, but they have had a few drops. Most of that yardage came on their touchdown drive. Brown set to kick off. Edwards is going to take this two yards deep. And he is going to be stacked up at the 13-yard line. He has done a lot of talking this week about Nebraska. That fueled players like the Browns in the backfield in the secondary. Ralph Brown said, as soon as I saw Troy Edwards, I got a tape of him from Coach Darlington, and I sat down and watched every one of his moves and daily. You know, and you know what he said? He took it home every night this summer and just studied Edwards, and that's good coaching by George Darlington, the secondary coach here in Nebraska, giving the players the opportunity to make the most of this opportunity today to play against a guy like an Edwards. Now the rifleman, Tim Rattay, has got to do something quickly. 35 to 6, he trails. Great pass. Pass is complete to Edwards up to the 23-yard line. Aaron Sw Irwin Sweeney on the tackle. And we have a penalty flag thrown. I think it's holding. As much as Louisiana Tech throws, let's listen to the call. Personal foul, roughing the pass, 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Big penalty for Louisiana Tech, but as much as they throw, Artie, you look back how many sacks they've allowed the last three years, it's amazing. They don't give up a whole lot. Yeah, listen to this statistic. I, I agree with you. It is amazing. Last year, they threw 495 passes, only got sacked 15 times. In the three years that Gary Croton's been there at Louisiana Tech, they've only been sacked 35 times. That is truly an amazing statistic. First and 10, Edwards and Jenkins. Rattay drops it, picks it up. He's going to be knocked down. Ball's loose. Does Nebraska have it? No. The officials say the ball is dead. 
That was very close. Jason Wilkes thought he had a hand on it. The big 6'4 senior out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Do you think Rattles rattled? No, I think he's okay. I mean, he took his eyes off the ball that time. As I said before, I think that drive for the touchdown settled this team down. He's had a couple of drops, but they just can't get anything consistently going. They're not even trying to run the football anymore. Right. So they got to keep throwing to the inside receivers and try to get a drive going again. Tech was hoping for at least 25 running plays. Rattay over the middle. Edwards, what a catch! Inside the 50, still on his feet. Down to the 38-yard line of Nebraska. This young man only stands five foot ten, but he's got a 40-inch vertical leap. And he runs a 4-4, but that's what I was talking about there, Ron. Trying to get the ball to the inside of this Nebraska defense. You're going to see him start off on the right side, takes two steps down the field, runs a skinny pose to the inside. The ball is thrown right to him. He leaps up, catches it, and makes positive yards after the catch. First and ten. Inside of a minute to play before halftime. Pass is knocked down. Nebraska had that covered. Five red jerseys surrounding the football. Just a reminder, the Marriott Halftime Report coming your way straight ahead with Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow. We'll have Terry Bradshaw on live along with the great name in college football, Eddie Robinson. And it seems only fitting that the Eddie Robinson Classic is being played here in Nebraska with another legend, Tom Osborne, having retired. You know, Tom Osborne is not here today. He had another engagement, but it's just a classy man that he is. He just felt by being here, it might take away some of the attention given to this Nebraska football team and Frank Solich. So Tom Osborne is not here today. Inside of 50 seconds to play in the first half. Rattay's pass is complete. A big hit is put on Stephen Hampton. The senior from Ruston, Louisiana. Hampton also a baseball player, and Louisiana Tech's going to burn their final timeout. And Mike Brown is the hardest hitter on this Nebraska defense. He led the team in tackles a year ago with 77. He's played both rover and free safety. And I'll tell you, when he tackles and he makes a tackle in the middle of the field, it's like a living textbook example of how to be a tackler. He is clearly, in the coach's opinion, the best tackler on this football team of Nebraska. And he's another candidate for the Jim Thorpe Award. Well, it's hardcore football on Fox Sports Net. Ronnie Lott, Bill Moss, and Ron Pitts bring you turf talk from the toughest guys in the NFL. Hardcore X's and O's, hardcore blood, sweat, and tears. Hardcore football for the hardcore fan. It's Hardcore Football Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listing. This week's special appearance by our own Kellen Winslow. And, you know, speaking of Ronnie Lott, Mike Brown reminds me a lot of Ronnie Lott. I coached Ronnie Lott when I was at USC, and Mike is not as big as Ronnie, but I'll tell you, he hits just as hard. Now we saw Charlie McBride on the sideline. There was an article in one of the papers here recently saying that, oh, Charlie's mellowing. I don't buy that for a minute. Players absolutely love him. Yeah, he, he says it the way it is, doesn't he? Oh, he did yesterday. A little confusion on the part of Tech. Players scrambling around. Delwyn Degree finally gets set on the right side. 40 seconds to play before the half. Rattay's pass picked away. Penalty flag is thrown. Jason Wilkes got a hand on it. It may be an illegal formation. I don't think they had enough people on the line. Too many on the line. Have to wait and listen to the call from referee Dale Newhouse. Disregard the play. The ball was touched behind the line of scrimmage. Be fourth down. Dale Newhouse from Orinda, California, one of the great officials in the country, and a good guy. Now you're going to see big old Wilts get up. He was in a stunt coming around from his defensive tackle spot, and as he was coming around, he saw the ball thrown and had enough presence to get up in the air and knock the ball down. Heck of a play. 
Fourth down for Tech with 36 seconds to play in the half. They're going for it. Pass complete up to the 27-yard line, and that'll be good enough for a first down as Edwards puts his hands on it. And he continues to talk. You know, I asked Gary Croton, who's the mellowest guy in the world, said, do you mind that? He goes, no, I hope he talks a lot. It doesn't bother him. Well, Gary said that the more Edwards talks, the better he plays. And so far, so far, he's backing it up. Nine for 99, 11-yard average. First and 10, ball on the 26-yard line. Rete swings it out to the right side. Now, there is a case in point where we may see the new rule in college football come into play that was very close to being what we would call a lateral. Right. If, the, if a forward pass or a pass is thrown backwards, it's live this year in college football. The defender can advance a pass thrown backwards, and the defense can pick it up. A couple other rules. One is going to be the, the hand pads and gloves, and this will start next year, but they're starting to enforce it a little bit this year without penalizing a team, is they have to be gray. They think they feel the officials will be able to see holding better if the hand pads are all gray. 28 seconds remaining in the half. Second and 10 from the 26. Rete again. Passes complete to James Jordan. And he takes a shot right at the 20-yard line. Pick up a six on the play. Gary Croton says, I love my two-minute offense. We're seeing it right now. Rete is just going to stop things with nine seconds left. Now, do you go for points on the board with a six, or do you go for the field goal? You, throw, for, you go for points. I think you throw both plays, third and fourth down, if you don't make it on third, into the end zone here. Because what you want to do if you're Louisiana Tech, Ron, is you want to go into the locker room feeling good about yourself. And if you can get the score 35 to 13 or 35 to 14, hey, you've got a little momentum. Plus, they're getting the ball when the second half starts. So, to me, you go for broke here. That's why you came to this game, to try and win this football game. Fourth and four. Eight seconds left. It is loud. Penalty flag is going to be thrown. And it goes against Tech. You know, Nebraska practices during the week with the loud Delay of game, offense. We play fourth, down. And it's good offensively and defensively because your players, and especially Newcomb, get used to the noise. In fact, it's amazing, Ron, they have a guy who sits up here in the press box that controls the volume, and he's on scholarship. <laughs> and he turns it down once in a while because when he turns it down, it's in between plays. That's when the coaches coach because it's hard for the coach to coach with all that noise. Ball sits on the 25, eight seconds left. Rete, he's going to be hit. Ball is loose. Chad Kelsey put on a big time knock. Edwards comes out of the pack. Dead ball. Ball belongs to Nebraska. What a rush by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And that's the way we will end the first half. Kelsey just blow it in from that left side. That's why he's an All-American, and that's why he's going to play in the National Football League someday for a long time. He was the lifter of the year in 1988 in the offseason here at the University of Nebraska. He is a big-time pass ruck rusher. And the other guy on the other side, Mike Rucker, who's been quiet today, hasn't been bad. Let's get set it down to Eric Clemens with Frank Solich. Okay, Coach, your debut here has gotten along good. Your offense has scored every time it's touched the ball. Your assessment of the first half? Well, we've had a couple big plays. We had a couple drives, which is glad to see that we had a combination of those two things. I thought the defense really played well, but, you know, that's one half of football. We'll see what happens this next half. We need to keep playing hard and hopefully wear them down a little bit. All right, Coach, continued right. success Thank to you. you. It's time now for our halftime report. Kevin Fraser and Kellen Winslow standing by in the south end zone. Guys? Thanks a lot, Eric. The Marriott Halftime Report, Kevin Frazier, along with Kellen Winslow. And it seems like the theme of the first half, Kellen, would have to be the more things change at Nebraska, the more they remain the same. 
Indeed. We saw a perfect example of that. It doesn't matter if Tom Devaney, excuse me, if Bob Devaney is the head coach or if it's Tom Osborne. Nebraska has a system and has a tradition. And, of course, the second point you want to make is that Bobby Newcomb has stepped into some big shoes and filling at the quarterback position and is having an outstanding game for his first start as a Nebraska Cornhusker. Yeah, Kellen, they have not missed a beat. 35-6, to six, the halftime score. want to remind you, coming up next, we will hear from the Blonde Bomber, Terry Bradshaw of Fox NFL Sunday, also a Louisiana Tech alum, and also coming to our set, the winningest college football coach ever, Eddie Robinson of Grambling. He's here. Second half moments away, 35-6, to six, our halftime score. Nebraska leads. Artie Gigantino, your impressions of the first half? Well, my impressions are this. I don't think Nebraska's running the ball very well. They've only rushed for 135 yards here in the first half, and their quarterback has only rushed for 14 yards. they got to get that run game going. Oh, uh, what's Louisiana Tech have to do? Well, just a moment ago, Eric Clemens talked to Louisiana Tech head coach Gary Croton. Eric, what did he say? All right, Artie and Ron, Gary Croton told me that they have to simply execute better offensively. They were not crisp at all in the first half, and on defense, quit overplaying. That's created those two big passes from Newcomb to, his, Newcomb to his tight end, Sheldon Jackson. If they can do that, they might be able to climb back into this ball game, guys. Well, Gary Croton's got an uphill battle to fight, no question about it, but they did have that one impressive drive in the second quarter. Now, Frank Solich, other, on the other hand, fearless Frankie. He had to be pleased at least with the balance that his team showed. Granted, two of the big pass plays accounted for most of the passing yards, Artie, but still, the balance they showed and the maturity of Bobby Newcomb's play calling impressive. Right, but you know what? These guys rush for almost 400 yards a game, and I know Frank Solich is not happy with rushing for only 135 yards here in the first half because to win the national championship again, he's got to get that number up to 400 by the end of the day. Now Nebraska will kick it away to begin the second half, and Chris Brown will keep the streak alive. Everyone has gone into the end zone. Only one has been returned. And Louisiana Tech will begin first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. This is a critical series, I think, for Louisiana Tech. They've got to come out here and move the football against this black shirt defense. They've got to come out and say, hey, we can play with Nebraska here in the second half. Well, they wanted 75 snaps, or that was what one of the keys were. Right. They're pretty much on track for that, but they also wanted to rush 25 times. They're not near that. Bobby Ray Tell in the backfield, and again, Rattay goes upstairs, and it is complete to Edwards at the 28, skips his way across the 30 to the 32. Good for another Louisiana Tech first down. Brian Shaw and Eric Johnson come up for the stop. Troy Edwards talks a lot, but he backed it up there in the first half. You know, he, he's a guy that's a good football player. You know, let's not forget something. He was number one in the country last year in reception yardage. He had over 1,700 yards receiving. This guy's a good football player. Sometimes it gets hinted, though, Ron, when you yak too much. Now he passed up the NFL. He was a right-in finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award. The running game trying to get some positive yards as Kevin Johnson inches his way up to the 40. And that'll be a pickup of about seven on the play. A little reverse play there, and that's what you should do against Nebraska. I think misdirection type plays are what is successful against this Cornhusker defense because they're so fast and they pursue so well. Pickup of six, we've played a minute here in the third. Second down and four. Swing it out to the left. Edwards waits for the block, gets it. Crosses the 40 on his feet to the 45 as he is ushered out of bounds. Good for another first down. Gary Croton had an interesting conversation with a guy who's now in the NFL who was a pretty decent college quarterback, and he got him a few words of advice. Well, yeah, he was with Peyton Manning this summer at a kid's football camp. And the one thing Peyton Manning told him he would do differently against Nebraska if he had to do it again, and that's go downtown a little bit more. Right. Peyton Manning felt Tennessee a year ago should have thrown the ball deeper. Now, the problem with that is the quarterback's got to hold on to the ball a little bit, and it puts a lot more pressure on your offensive line. And we talked about the lack of sacks, and they're not accustomed to holding on to the football. First and 10 on the 45 for Louisiana Tech. Bobby Ray Tell bounces off of that low center of gravity up to about the 48-yard line. 
This is a young man that averaged just about 10 carries a game, and he still got 800 yards. Well, he's a tough guy to tackle, as we talked about in the first half. He's got a low center of gravity. He's got wonderful balance, and the coaches really love him because of the passion at which he plays the game of football. Pick up a three. Nebraska moving around on defense. The quick look in. Edwards had it off his shoulder pads, and he is hit hard again by Ralph Brown. First team all Big 12 last year for Brown, the junior out of Hacienda Heights, California. You know, the tonight's is our seventh and is his 26th consecutive start, which is just an outstanding accomplishment for a corner here at the University of Nebraska. That was a big time play again, and the formation that time employed by Louisiana Tech was empty. There were no backs in the backfield. Third down and seven now for Tech. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Nebraska rushes five. Rote looks over the middle. Pass is complete. Watch the running room for Edwards. Inside the 10. Does he get in? Touchdown, Louisiana Tech. Edwards. 52 yards for Troy Edwards. He had 13 touchdowns receiving last year. You know, Ron, that's what we were talking about, about throwing the ball inside. Troy Edwards is over here to the right as an inside receiver. He comes down the field, runs a quick hook, catches the ball inside. It's challenging the underneath pass defenders of Nebraska to cover him. That's what they want to do here at Louisiana Tech tonight. That's what they didn't do as much of in the first half as they talked about. And that's a great example of it can work if you throw the ball inside. And Charlie McBride is going to have to get his troops regathered and make some adjustments. They're going for two. Okay, has to scramble. Looking for somebody, and they got it. Sean Cangelosi gets the two-point conversion, and they're back on schedule 35-14. to 14. Edwards' career high for receptions is 14 in a game. He now has 12. And Artie Gigantino, coach, you called it. A very important possession. Louisiana Tech makes good. They get the two-point conversion, which followed this exciting run after the catch by Troy Edwards. Troy Edwards failed to reach 100 yards receiving just once last year. He has 168 yards today, and Nebraska's lead has been trimmed to 35-14. You made up an interesting stat years ago, the run after the catch. Right, the rack statistic. Fritz Sherman and I, when we were coaching at the Los Angeles Rams, used to keep track of that, and that's what a receiver does after he catches a pass. Run after catch. And that was a wonderful example of a lot of run after catch by Troy Edwards. Wiggins and Walker are back. Walker already with that exciting 98-yard kickoff return, which followed a Louisiana Tech touchdown. From the 10. More running room. Walker again. Slips, falls, loses the ball, gets control again. 15-yard return as he takes it up to the 27. As we look at Louisiana Tech's scoring drive, which was capped off by that guy. Six plays, 80 yards. Took him a minute and 56. And that's what Gary Croton said. Don't look at time of possession. When we have less time than our opponent, we usually win. It's the most misleading statistic in all of football. It's how many times you have snaps under center and what you do with it. It's plays. Bobby Gray, number 43, a redshirt freshman out of Texas, looks to be shaken up on the play. Can't put a whole lot of weight on that left leg. It'll be interesting to see what Nebraska does here on their initial drive here in the second half. What adjustments the coaching staff made at halftime to get this option game going. Now well, Frank Solich wants to get his starter some time, and he's getting it. Buck Alder and McAvicki in the backfield. And they begin again going right up the middle, and this time McAvick is going to be stacked up by that interior line. And by Damon Harrington, the Mike linebacker out of Elkton, Maryland. Harrington, a great story, number 51. He's a walk-on. He's the strong, one of the strongest players on the team. Pickup of one. Oh, 
This time Newcomb's going to put it up in the air. Has a man wide open in the flat. Pass is complete to Davison. He lunges forward to the first down. This week on Baseball Thursday, Bo Vaughn and the Red Sox continue to power their way towards the playoffs as they hook up with the Blue Jays. Or the Rockies bring their lumber attack into Milwaukee to face Jeremy Burnett and the Brew Crew. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Along with Eric Clemens, Artie Gigantino, Kella Winslow, and Kevin Frazier, I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you back to Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Ball is loose. Newcomb, I think, covered it up. In case you just joined us, Nebraska scored in 48 seconds to open up the game. And it has been all the Huskers, but Louisiana Tech with two very impressive scoring drives, one here in the second half has helped close the gap. And, you know, if they would have been able to score at the end of the first half there, you know, instead of getting sacked, that really would have made this game very interesting. Second down and 12 now for Newcomb. Two wide receivers to the right. Looks for the second man. Kenny Cheatham with a catch, and he falls forward up to the 48-49 yard line. And depending on where they spotted it, probably will be just about a foot and a half, two feet short of a first down. You know, that's something you don't see very often at Nebraska, a straight drop back pass. It's usually a bootleg or some kind of play action pass. But that time, Newcomb took the ball, dropped straight back, threw the ball out to his big wide receiver, Kenny Cheatham. Now that's Cheatham's first catch of the afternoon. Sets up a third down and one situation for the Huskers. Boy, I tell you what, he's seven for seven. Throwing the football in college. Six for six this afternoon. Second man through, Buck Alder. He is stacked up. I think he may have it up. You know, it's another good, solid job inside by Jerome King and Otis Pitts, the two defensive tackles from Louisiana Tech. These guys are hanging in there and doing a good, gutty job, I think, against a physically superior offensive front from Nebraska. That has helped Nebraska go 60 and three the last five years. That's an NCAA record. 49 and two the last four years. Not bad. Newcomb, he's going up. Looking deep, has to throw it out of the flat. Should hit the cutoff man. Intended for Buckhalter. Quincy Stewart was the one putting the pressure on Bobby Newcomb. You know, one thing I'm seeing already in this game, Frank Solich calling the plays and Turner Gill instead of Tom Osborne. There's a lot more passing, or at least attempted passes, on first and 10. I think Frank wants to get the passing game going a little bit more than, it's, than Tom Osborne did. Tom Osborne sometimes would come out in the second half and not even throw a pass. Right. Second and 10. Newcomb pitches it back. Buck Alder stacked up as he crosses the 50. Quincy Stewart again. We have mentioned Quincy Stewart's name an awful lot. He is showing that he does have great speed there on the, on the zip linebacker spot. I love that name for a linebacker, Zip. <laughs> Stutter Zip. Those are two great linebacker names. And the coaches are very high on this young man. And so far, they are taught, taught, he is proving that they are exactly right. Well, Todd Bradford, the defensive coordinator, he hopes this guy steps up not only this afternoon, but the rest of the season. Third down and seven for the Huskers. Newcomb into the flat, pass is complete. Kenny Cheatham, we have a penalty flag thrown, and I think it's going to be roughing the quarterback. Penalty will be against Louisiana Tech. Roughing the passer, defense, 15 yards, first down, number 94. Oh, and they had him stopped too, Artie. This time they're in the shotgun. Bobby takes the snap, throws the football out to his right, and the ball comes right out of the shadows, right to the big wide receiver, Kenny Cheatham. It's like baseball on the old pitcher's mound, right? That's right. You know, the ball comes right out of the shadows. Now the total gain on that play, you throw the penalty in. It was a three yard pass, tack on the 15 for the penalty. That's an 18 yard pickup for the Huskers. Davison has to hurry up and hustle off the field. Again, Newcomb lost it. Tries to keep it alive. The ball is still loose. Let's see. Louisiana, Texas, they have it. The official says Nebraska's got it, and they're the guys that count. 
you know, Bobby Newcomb's showing some first game jitters here. You know, I saw him in the Nebraska spring game, and he looked like he'd been engineering this option offense for 10 years, for goodness sake. Right. But today, especially here now in the second half, that's the second time he's fumbled an exchange. He looks a little bit nervous here. He's just got to settle down. I think the whole team does. Frank Solich saw a very impressive first half. Here in the second, things aren't going so well. On second and 15. No place to go for Buckalder. Adrian Fredericks, the senior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, put the first hit on, and we have another player injured. And it is Fredericks. Uh, he did a good job of getting up the field that time and making the play in the backfield or close to being in the backfield. That's a good linebacker play that time by Adrian Fredericks. Nebraska, of course, riding that 49-game win streak, 42-game home win streak. And during that streak, they've outscored their opponent by an average of 35, but right now, Tech hanging around. Third and 13. Newcomb looked in the flat to Buck Calder. He was covered up. He is exciting when he keeps it. Still alive. Danson and Franson and finally drops at the 40. Desmond Nunnery, the defensive end we talked about at the top of the show, finally brought down the quick Bobby Newcomb. That was going to be a double screen. One, he looked at Buckholter, then he turned around and looked at uh, Joel McAvicka in the flat on the left. That was a double screen that time. They worked on it in practice quite a bit the other day, but Chuck Chris Willis, number 96, from Louisiana Tech, did a wonderful job of getting in the middle of it. And we'll see Bill LaFleur for the first time, the senior out of Norfolk, Nebraska. He was all-state quarterback, formerly a walk-on, is First real big time collegiate punt. What a job on a kick coverage by Nebraska. Lance Brown right underneath it. And Louisiana Tech is backed up after the 34 yard kick. We have 723 left to play in the third quarter. The Huskers still lead 35-14. Well, three things that Tom Osborne helped create here in Nebraska. The walk-on program, he has them in trendy, and continuity, especially in the coaching staff. A lot of that uh, certainly comes down to Bob Devaney and Tom Osborne, uh, but they were able to put together a staff uh, of very good coaches, a staff that was uh, very loyal uh, to, to the head coach, very loyal certainly to the program, and um, that's made a, a big, big difference in, uh, in certainly being able to stay consistent through all those years. Rate is going deep. There's nobody there. Edwards stopped at about the 18-yard line, and Brown was the closest one to it. Let's talk about that continuity. Boy, Nebraska coaches just don't leave. Well, why should you? This is a great place, and what that allows them to do, Ron, is implement the same scheme. As you said, these coaches are not trending offense and defense as we look at Charlie McBride, but also they evaluate players to fit into this system. And I think that's just a wonderful thing, and that's why this program is so strong. John Simon now moves over to the right of Rafe. From the five, again, lofts it up. Edwards run by the defense. Look out, the 4-4 four, four speed is on. Can they catch him? Louisiana Tech. 94 yards. An explosion by Rattay to Edwards again here in the second half. Well, Kellen Winslow said it. They ought to throw the ball deep a little bit more. And so did Peyton Manning. And obviously, Gary Croton's following their advice because that's exactly what happened there. They went for the home run, and they got the home run. Well, I'll tell you, this Nebraska defense right now is a little bit back on its heels. Well, Gary Croton should call Peyton Manning and thank him as that's the longest reception in Troy Edwards' career. Talk about the run after the catch, too. The extra point. Pond has clinked one already today. This one is through the form. Well, the longest play last, last year. 82 yards. Here is Edwards again. Boy, I tell you, that, uh, what he turned down the Jets so hard, he was being tracked down by a couple of DBs. He just flat out outran them. Well, you know what happens, though, when you go to halftime, you have to make adjustments as a coaching staff. 
And obviously, Gary Croton saw some things he felt he could take advantage of because now they've scored the first two times they've had the ball here in the second half. That's good coaching, though. And you know, when you run this style of offense, this passing, this controlled passing attack that they do at Louisiana Tech, you have to make adjustments based on what the defense is taking away from you. They were taking away the long passes in the first half. Maybe now in the second half, they're playing them a little bit different. That time they were playing inside man, and Edwards, and Edwards was, was allowed to run outside of them. Jerry Crone was the offensive coordinator with Bill Lewis at Georgia Tech. He is a true innovator, and he gives a kiss to his star. But you know what? He knows this system, and he believes in this system, and he can correct mistakes, and he can make adjustments. Brent Weirich's kick goes into the end zone. It is Joe Walker. Straight up, crosses the 20 up to the 23-yard line, and after the Huskers will begin leading by 14 at 35-21. Well, it's hardcore football on Fox Sports Net. Ronnie Lott, Bill Moss, and Ron Pitts bring you turf talk from the toughest guys in the NFL. Hardcore X's and O's, hardcore blood, sweat, and tears. Hardcore football for the hardcore fans. Hardcore football Tuesday, 8 o'clock. Fox Sports Net. Check your local listing. Charlie McBride is none too pleased right about now. Let's see what Newcomb and company does. And once again, that Louisiana Tech defense stopped Buck Alder cold. That's what they wanted to do from the beginning of the game. You know, one of the things you have to take into consideration here is that when Louisiana Tech was getting ready to play Nebraska, not only did they not have a quarterback who could run the option, but they didn't have guys on the offensive line that came off as fast as Nebraska. Now they're getting used to the speed, and they're starting to settle down a little bit more. Newcomb looks to put it up. Pass is complete to Lance Brown. He crosses the 35, pushed out of bounds at about the 37 and a half. Louisiana Tech feels good about themselves. Eric Clemens, you're at the end of the first half. There were guys sitting down with their heads in their hands a little bit. Now that they've scored both touchdowns and both offensive possessions here in the second half, nobody's sitting but Troy Edwards, and he should be. He just ran 94 yards with the football. They feel like they're back in it. Now they'll be back in it if they can stop Nebraska now. Artie, you talked about how they needed something like five really good stops in the football game. This is a big stop if they can do it. Newcomb on the option, keeps it. Up to about the 45-yard line. Pickup of seven on the play. Marlon Ford comes up from that quarterback spot to put on the first hit. That was vintage quarterback play that time by a Nebraska quarterback. You fake the belly up inside, the quarterback gets on the perimeter, keeps the ball, and ducks up inside. That's going to make Frank Solich a lot happier if they can continue to do that. Second down and three after the pickup of seven. 5.45 to play here in the third. Newcomb to Magavica. Barrels his way down to the 42-yard line. Oh, I tell you what, for a guy that size and 240 pounds, he motored through the middle. Well, that's big-time explosiveness by a guy who's extremely strong. Look at those thighs right there, Ron. He gets the football. That's like a truck going up the field. I'd call him a fullback, not a fullback, because he is a bull when he's running with the football. Well, he's just passed another Nebraska fullback for, I think, number five on the all-time fullback rushing list, and that guy was Frank Solich. Buckholder has a blocker in front. Takes a hit, still on his feet, down to the 30-yard line. Larry Wright put on the first hit, but that wasn't good enough, and Quincy Stewart had to come up and wrap him up. An example of a big physical back like Buck Buckholder. All the Nebraska backs are big guys, and they run over tacklers in each and every game. 68 yards. The big train. He is that. A very controlled drive by the Cornhuskers. We are inside of five minutes here in the third. Newcomb looks over the middle, waiting patiently. Penalty flag is thrown as the pass is complete to TJ DeBates. Flag was thrown in the secondary. They mark it at about the 18 where the flag was thrown. Officials will talk it over. You 
know, Ron, I'm surprised that Nebraska is still throwing the ball so much. And that penalty is against Louisiana Tech. Boy, they need their defense to come up with a big play. Their offense is doing the job. Is Let's listen into the call first. Well, Todd Bradford knows that his troops are under man coming in here, but their margin for error is slim. They can't afford that. But the guy that's the happiest is Charlie McBride right now, the defense coordinator from Nebraska, so he can make the adjustments on that on the sideline. First and ten ball on the 21. Again, Buck Alder banging around. Well, the Nebraska defense, Charlie McBride, he's going to look down and see at the end of this game that this is the most yards a Nebraska defense has ever allowed a receiver. Edwards, 262 yards catching the football today. That's a career high. But he was nervous about it the other day with oh, yeah. us because, again, the Nebraska people here don't have a quarterback in this program that can throw the ball like Rete or receivers that run routes like these Louisiana Tech receivers. Second and seven. Buck Alder again. Makovica lays a block as he crosses the 15 down to the 12. Larry Wright on the stop. The senior from Monroe, Louisiana. But this is what you do with Nebraska. You line up, you run some option, you run some blast, you run some pitch. And I'll tell you, everybody here is a good blocker, whether you're a guard or you're a fullback like Joel McAvick at number 45. You get up in there and you block somebody. These people can teach blocking as good as any coaching staff in the United States. Third down and one. Again, Buckholder, he's got some running room. He's got the first down as he makes his way down to the three. Larry Wright again from the free safety spot there to make the stop. It's so impressive to see Buckholder get that pitch, Coach, and you see three, four jerseys, including your wide receivers knocking guys on their keister. Well, the wide receivers do a good job of blocking also, not just the fullbacks and the guards. But you know what I like about Buckholder? He gets a lot of yak. Yards after contact. Yeah. When a defender makes contact on him, he keeps going. I call that not rack, but yak. Yards after contact. Oh, you and I got a lot of yak. Yeah, we got a lot of yak. <laughs> That's first and goal now from the four. 3.09 left to play in the third. Newcomb has Buck Alder trailing. The late pitch. Touchdown, Nebraska. Dan Alexander. Took the late pitch from Newcomb. You talk about a timing pitch. That was it. Bobby Newcomb is obviously getting more and more comfortable now here at the end of the third quarter. That was a blind pitch that time. It was a great feel by him as to where his pitch man was, but also where the defenders were. And Nebraska has answered the call. After two very impressive scoring drives by Louisiana Tech here in the third, Nebraska answers. Chris Brown puts the finishing touches on the drive. 2.59 to play in the third, 42-21. Dan Alexander, no touchdowns last year. He's got one here in 98. 42-21 is our score. Nebraska doubling up Louisiana Tech with 2.59 in the third. Option football can be complicated. Watch Sheldon Jackson here block the outside back of Lopapo, and what happens, it allows Bobby Newcomb to get to the corner and stretch the perimeter. This is excellent execution of the offense, but McAvicka also, number 45, gets up in there as Lopapo comes off, takes Newcomb, and he just pitches the ball to the big guy, Alexander. You know, this, this offense is extremely complicated because it's got so many different blocking schemes. Brown to kick it away to Edwards and Bobby Raytel. And that goes completely out of the end zone. It's time now for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's check in with Kevin Frazier. Guys, upset Bruin in East Lansing, third quarter. Michigan State up 16-9. David Washington decides to keep it instead of passing it. On fourth and one, it's a touchdown, and all of a sudden, folks, we have a surprise. 15th ranked Colorado 
up and watch Washington one more time. He thinks about throwing it, but he keeps it. He goes in. It's all even in the fourth quarter at 16. Oh, I love Sonny Lubick, Colorado State head coach. One of the most underrated head football coaches in the entire country. And plus, he's a great guy. Nobody in the backfield. Tech has scored on both drives here in the third. Ratay keeps it. Louisiana Tech had two yards rushing coming into that play. Well, that was an empty formation again. Four receivers to one side, one receiver to the other, and he ran a quarterback draw. The idea there, Ron, is the hope that the defensive linemen rushing up the field give him away. Gary Croton does not like to run the quarterback draw because Rate is not one of the most mobile quarterbacks. He's an excellent quarterback, but running the football is not his forte. Edwards split to the near side. Bobby Ray Tell back in the lineup. Rattay's pass is complete as they cross the 30 to James Jordan. You know, one thing that we're taking thank goodness for, and that is the memory of Gary Croce, because without that Gary Croce memory, he probably wouldn't have been in Louisiana Tech. Yeah, he was in his junior college, and uh, the, the junior college coach got a phone call from Rattay's father, and he was going to transfer to Scottsdale Junior College, and a year later, Gary Croton came back and was recruiting and remembered the phone call from Rapay's dad and ended up recruiting him because of that phone call from Rapay's dad to the junior college coach. That was good for a first down. Rapay to Edwards at the 40. Boy, Rapay just turned Brown completely around on that play. Edwards just, I'll tell you what, Brown wasn't sure where Edwards was. You know, one thing I like about Rattay, he's got excellent quickness in terms of his ability to deliver the football. He gets the ball here on the shotgun snap, he looks for his receiver, and he gets rid of the football. That's why he doesn't get sacked, Ron, is because right. he can get rid of the ball quickly. Edwards has tied a career best with 14 receptions today. Bobby Raytel blasts his way up to about the 48-yard line. And one thing I think Rattay's form has really changed since he first came to Louisiana Tech. He was almost throwing a little bit of sidearm when he first showed up with Gary Croton. Yeah, and Gary tried to get him to throw the ball a little bit more over his head, and obviously he succeeded in doing that. But, you know, there's a fine line with that also, Ron. You've got to allow the guy that's chucking the football yeah. to be able to do it as naturally as he possibly can. Second and seven. John Simon in motion. The quick look in, Edwards is covered up by Brown, knocks it away, and he adds to his career best. And speaking of Edwards, here's more on him with Eric Clemens. Eric? All right, during that 94-yard touchdown run, one of the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech told me, hey, Edwards was laughing at the Damascus defenders in pursuit 40 yards away from the end zone. He talks a lot. He backs it up, guys. Now he's got 285 yards receiving. Not a bad afternoon for number 16. I think, third play, down seven. I think he'll play in the NFL someday. I think he's got a shot. Big third down for the Bulldogs. Rattay over the middle, pass is complete. Right at the first down, Morgan Paul Jenkins, a former walk-on, who really came up through the system, and they're going to give him the first. Well, it was close, but I, I think it was the correct call. Now, one of the things we're seeing Nebraska not do today is blitz very much. Charlie McBride did not want to come into this game and blitz too much because he felt between Kelsey and Rucker, he had great pass rush defensive ends, and he didn't need to blitz as right. much. The other thing is that Louisiana Tech uses so much shotgun, it's easier for the quarterback to get rid of the ball against the blitz and shotgun. Well, how about this formation? Husker formation. Oh, snaps it over the head. is Edwards who is playing a little bit of QB and he's going to lose a bundle loss of about 19 on the play well they call it their Husker formation it's a little abstract now Edwards is right here he's kind of playing quarterback and you got two receivers over here you got another one here and two receivers over there they're going to snap the ball to Edwards but the ball goes over his head he could he has the option on that Ron to either run or pass well you also saw number 13 Tim Rattay was coming around behind him maybe it was going to be a little trick play yeah. no pitch back to the quarterback well, that sets up a second and 29. Final 15 seconds here in the third. 
And a timeout is going to be called by Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech. And we're going to keep it right here. You know, you talk about the guys that have had an impact on that man's life, Jerry Croton. You talk about the Jack McNells. But Lavelle Edwards, I think, is the man that's made the biggest impression on him. And he talked about quarterbacks. He said, here, don't worry about it. Come to quarterback, it's productivity. Well, yeah, because and you know what a quarterback's got to be able to do in today's football? He's got to create plays and create touchdowns. You cannot do everything anymore in the quarterback position by the textbook. Defenses are too complicated. They blitz too much. The great quarterbacks get, get out of trouble and make big plays. Well, tomorrow on Fox Sports Net, it's Formula One racing. Michael Schumacher knows he must defend his 97 win in Belgium if he's going to have any chance of wrestling away the F1 championship from Mika Hakkinen. The Belgian Grand Prix tomorrow at 10 on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. We're talking about Formula One Grand Prix. That's the passing attack. That's a Formula One passing attack for Louisiana Tech. Yardage only two off. Second down and 29. Balls on to their own 36-yard line. Simon joins with Tay in the backfield. Three wide receivers to the right. Tay in trouble. Let's it fly. Pass is complete again to Edwards. You know, looking at that statistic before, let's not forget now, Louisiana Tech last year was third in the nation in total offense with 496 yards a game. So they can move the football. You know, they're a little bit like Nebraska, though, in, in terms of a philosophy. That's what they believe in on offense, and that's what they do. That's how they recruit their players to come to Louisiana Tech for this offense just like Nebraska does. Obviously a different style. It's the same philosophy. Well, a big third down now for the Bulldogs. Third and 24. Final nine seconds of the quarter. Retain to Edwards. Slips one tackle. Able to lunge ahead to about the 44-yard line. That'll be back to just about the original line of scrimmage. Bringing up a fourth down at about nine and a half. And that'll be the end of three quarters of play. Now Tim Rache, the junior out of Phoenix, Arizona, has done his job, and he's taken a lot of shots. His team trails by three touchdowns as we head to the fourth. 42-21, the Cornhuskers lead as we head to the final 15 minutes of the game here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Now the academic player of the game is brought to you by GTE, the official telecommunications company to the NCAA, and our academic player of the game Brian Shaw, the linebacker with a perfect 4.0 GPA in animal science. He is just a junior. 28 tackles last season. He's having a nice game again this afternoon. Congratulations to Brian. Fourth down for Louisiana Tech. They're 2-3 this afternoon. And it stays under pressure. Look out. Bush, the sophomore from Larkwood, Iowa. They say he's a Grant Wistrom type. He showed it there. Yeah, he's the guy that never smiles, but I'll tell you, when the ball is snapped, he smiles and gets across the line of scrimmage. Does an excellent job that time on a stunt, coming up inside, and then just chases Rate down. That's a big-time defensive end play. And he doesn't start, but the coaches love him because they love his intensity and they love the way he approaches playing the game of football. Look at the look on him, too. Well, he's a mean-looking guy. <laughs> yes, isn't he? Now Nebraska will take over on the Louisiana Tech 42-yard line, leading 42-21. to 21. Now Frank Solich wanted his starters to get playing time, and they're getting just that. Nobody expected them still to be in in the fourth. The pitch. A lot of running room for Lance Brown, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. Larry Wright made the hit. Well, Nebraska came out of the gate in the third, stumbling just a little bit. They're turning on the Jets now. We're at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, the 221st consecutive sellout. A 42-game home win streak on the line, and Nebraska's making good on that. Along with Artie Gigantino, Eric Clemens, Kevin Frazier, and Kellen Winslow, I'm Ron Thulin. We have 14.46 left to play in the ball game as the shadows have crept over Tom Osborne Field. And Nebraska with a first and 10 on the 29. 
Nebraska thought Lance Brown was knocked out way down the field. They lined up wrong. Lefree said, nope, here's the ball. Move it back. That, that, that play in that formation was a double slot, but it resembled the old wishbone type of offense from the University of Oklahoma in the 70s and the 80s. I remember that. Newcomb. They try the right side, bouncing around. It's Buck on it. You know, when Nebraska decides on a quarterback, so they, they have kind of an eight-point criteria on what they judge their starting quarterback and what he needs to be like. Well, the one thing they, they like about the quarterbacks is their ability to run the ball and run speed to running the ball. But the eight things that they like to take into consideration when deciding on a quarterback are number one experience. Dead ball, personal foul, defense, half the distance to the goal line, automatic first down. What their grade was in the spring game, their durability, their big play potential, their accuracy in passing, their running ability, and their option speed. Those are the things they look for. Well, here you're going to see the penalty. Guy, guy hit somebody in Nebraska right in the face. Dominic Raiola. Dominic Raiola, you can't do that. That's dumb, Ron. That you dude. cannot make a mistake no. like that. Nebraska keeps it on the ground, and they're beginning to churn up the yards and the clock. It's Buck Calder again, big train on the right side. Stop on the play by number 42, Adrian Peters. Now the Nebraska Cornhuskers said they wanted to play the play today. They've done it. Well, that's what you have to do, though, because you not you do not know going into the game what Louisiana Tech is going to do on defense. They're going to gamble. They're going to stunt with the down guys. You got to worry about yourself and not try to adjust to everything that Louisiana Tech does. Well, the one thing is high-risk offense is Makovica takes up the middle. They didn't want any turnovers, and so far. That high-risk offense is not pop the ball up, put it on the turf. Well, in all of football, the number one statistic is turnovers. If you get the ball back, you usually win. If you turn the ball over, you usually lose. Frank Solich, originally out of Johnstown, Pennsylvania, grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Was Bob Devaney part of the first recruiting class for Coach Devaney? Played fullback since he took over as running back coach before he became head coach. Nine NCAA rushing titles, seven of the last 10. We're seeing some of the benefits of that now. Buck Calder again, left side, touchdown! Nebraska option football, down by the goal line. They would prefer to have the quarterback keep the ball. But Louisiana Tech is doing a good job of taking the quarterback out of the game on the option, so he dishes it off to the tailback. Perfect. Now Louisiana Tech's going to look back at the game film and realize that that fancy formation when they snap the ball over the head of Edwards, that may have been one of, if not the biggest play of the game. That forced them in fourth down and ten, which they didn't get as we opened up here in the fourth. Brown continues to be perfecto. Now, Corral Buck Calder showing that D'Angelo Evans, when he comes back from the knee injury, is going to have to work hard to regain this playing time. Nebraska leads 49-21. Welcome back to the Eddie Robinson Classic in Lincoln. Nebraska Cornhuskers on top, 49-21 in the fourth quarter. Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow. And Kellen, I ask you, what can Louisiana Tech take away from this game as a positive? No matter what the score is, they can take away the fact that they can score on Division I talent. Troy Edwards, what a talent. And what Nebraska gets out of this is simply the fact that, hey, New head coach, new quarterback, it doesn't matter. The nation should be on notice. Nebraska's still a force. Yeah, Louisiana Tech beat Alabama last year. Meanwhile, Troy Edwards, 16 catches. I'm sure that a lot of other defense offenses in the Big 12 looking at this and thinking maybe they can exploit that fact. I'm, I'm sure Artie has a comment on that. Artie, Ron. Thanks, Kevin. We'll kick it off first. It'll go to Edwards. He's going to let it go into the end zone. And once again, first and 20. Coach? Well, you know what the else Louisiana Tech takes home is the fact that they will not be in a more hostile environment all year like it was here in Lincoln. That's number one. But I'll tell you, Charlie McBride 
has got to be alarmed a little bit because it tells everybody else in the country that the way to beat Nebraska is maybe just to throw the ball all the time because you can't run against it. So it's almost a double-edged sword there. Well, minus 23 yards rushing for Louisiana Tech. That's the fourth worst by an opponent in Nebraska history. But they've thrown for 366, which is the sixth best by an opponent. Rete wants to add to it. He's got Edwards again. Look out. Oh, my goodness. Troy Edwards again, 80 yards. Have mercy. My goodness, Coach, I tell you what, we have seen some good receivers in our time, but this young man is a superstar. But he's getting the opportunity. Now he's running against Jerome Peterson here, who hasn't been playing much. And what happens? Jerome is on his outside leverage. He's got to get inside. He bites on a fake, and Edwards goes right by him. Boy, Charlie McBride. I'll tell you what, he's got high blood pressure. It probably just went up about, the diastolic is probably up about 200 now. Well, you know, it's frustrating for a coach because you're on the sidelines and there's not much you can do about it. Nebraska plays so much man-to-man. -man. Charlie might want to think about going to some zone here. Well, the extra point by Pond is no good. The second one he's missed today. And Gary Croton's going to have to take a long, hard look at that. 446 yards passing. Fourth best by an opponent now against Nebraska. They jumped up two. But Kevin Pond, the junior college transfer out of Covington, Louisiana, hit the goal post on his first. This one, boy, that was like a 50-degree wedge that you shanked. Oh, yeah, he just got shanked. Would you call it before a clink? Clinked it. Well, that was a clunk that time. I'll tell you. <laughs> it went off the other goal post. So we got yak, rack, clink, and clunk. Right. Right. Our own big time terminology here. But I'll tell you one thing about terminology that Charlie McBride is not going to be happy about, and that's called the passing game right now, because as I started to say before, it gets frustrating. Nebraska plays 90% man-to-man coverage. This offense is suited against a man-to-man -man coverage type team. Charlie thought about playing more zone in this game, but elected not to earlier in the week because he just felt his players did the best job of coverage on man -to -man, in man-to-man -man coverage. Well, obviously, Tim Rattay liked what he saw because he put that one right on the money. They talked about the soft touch, not very emotional. Boy, he does have a nice touch on the football, very catchable ball. Wiggins and Walker are back to receive the short kick. Walker. Inside the 20. Cuts back, still on his feet as he crosses the 45, close to the 50. 30 yards on the return by Joe Walker, who already has one for a touchdown. You know, I loved him last year as a football player, and he was only a freshman when he was a nickelback. He is a big-time football player, and I'll tell you, he is going to be on some All-American teams before he's done here at the University of Nebraska. Now, if I was to tell you, or I were to tell you yesterday, Artie, that with 12.32 left to play in the ball game, that Nebraska still have first-teamers in, would you have thought I was crazy? Probably. But, you know, you got to play your first team, though, Ron, so they get in shape and they get weary of a game situation so later in the year they're ready to go. Newcomb's still in, pitches it back. Now, we talked about Troy Edwards. How about an NCAA record? Four yards. Receiving, he shattered that. It was something like 366, if I'm not mistaken. He's about 375 right now. Randy Gatewood of UNLV held the previous record, but that man is now in the record books. 375. Now you got to understand, Nebraska's defense in the last 16 years, there've only been three times that opponents have got gotten over 200 yards average passing a game. They're three. That's what he got today. From the I formation, 49-27, 12-24, penalty flag is thrown. Dan Alexander on the carry. Flag was thrown in the backfield. You know, it looked like a hold in the line of, the, of Nebraska that time. Jason Schwab, number 65, the right tackle. It looked like he took somebody down on a takedown. And a player for Louisiana Tech is indeed down. Listen, listen in to referee Dale Newhouse. 
Selu Olofapo is down. Holding. Holding. Offense. Holding. Ten yards penalty from the spot of foul. Replay second down. You know, I'm glad college football, they don't say who did it. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, that was a discussion that the Big 12, I think, and a lot of conferences right. were having last year. Mm -hmm. Should we go ahead and say it? I think it's good. Let us say it. <laughs> but, you know, the guy's got to walk around campus all week. Yeah. And you don't want people being mad at him on campus. So just blame it on the offensive line somewhere. You know, Gary Croton takes a lot of time with his quarterbacks, and it's shown today. But they still trail 49-27. We'll check on the injury. Get back right after this. When the head coach runs out, that ain't good. Nebraska defensive coaches have their team huddled around them. Selu Olofapo of Louisiana Tech got up under his own power, got the helmet back on. He wants to get back in. Second down and 19. Buck Alder in the backfield. Newcomb keeps it. Dancing around, bounces off one hit, and then he's wrapped up as he makes his way to the 43-yard line. Chris Willis, the junior out of Mesquite, Texas, just outside of Dallas on the stop. Versatility that time by Nebraska in their formations. It was a shotgun formation with one back in the backfield. Newcomb got the ball and ran an option out of the shotgun. You know, last year, Louisiana Tech, and I think all of us agree, were, were slighted not going to a bowl despite yeah, their record. They were 9-2. Yeah. I mean, to me, they should have been in the independent bowl. But they took this game because they want to play the big team, so that won't happen again. Newcomb. Pulls it down, he's off and running. Now he throws it. Complete up to the 45-yard line. Well, Buck Holder showing he's got some hands. He had three receptions last year. The question I have for you, Coach, are they doing the right things to pull even with the Nebraskas, the Auburns, the Alabamas? Oh, absolutely. I think to be recognized and to make your players like Retay or Edwards become All-Americans, you have to get national exposure. And I thought it was a great idea by Gary Croton to buy his players rings because he said, I did it because the game is for the kids. We didn't go to a bowl game. What other reward do I have for my players? He bought them all rings. They said nine and two, the number one independent team in the country. Bill LaFleur back to kick it away. And that's going to try to down it, and they don't get it. Thought they had a beat on it, but it goes into the end zone. Lance Brown was underneath it. He already had one that he stopped at the five. Didn't get this one. You know, it's a good news, bad news situation for that about the rings and about having a coach successful because Louisiana Tech, maybe not the big, big, big school. Right now, Gary Croton, in a lot of publications, the hottest young coach. Well, he's got a chance to be, and I like his philosophy, though, of what he's doing with this program. He believes his equalizer is throwing the football, and like he said, hey, we got to start somewhere and try to play the big boys, get on national TV, and that's our starting point for this program. Still a lot of time left, 10-28. Rattay's pass is complete again to his favorite receiver. This young man is going to stir rust in Louisiana. You know, he's the youngest of eight children. He's probably running around the kitchen most of the time when he was young, trying to get some food. But, you know, he's a, obviously a great young man with an outstanding future. So Gary Croton can relate to that. Gary's got five children. Absolutely. Pick up a six on the play inside of 10 minutes. Nebraska leads it 49-27. We'll say again. Thrown behind the intended receiver. Cedric Williams. You know, Charlie McBride was nervous about his defensive alignment running out of steam because when you play a team that's going to run a lot of screens and throw the football on almost every down, the guys that get the most tired are your defensive linemen. But so far, so good. To me, they don't look like they've lost the beat. Third down and four. Croton says a lot of defensive lines get tired against him in the fourth. Rattay's pass complete, first down again. Edwards still on his feet. Jay Foreman brings him down, but not before. Troy Edwards comes up with a big catch. I, re I think all of us remember the great shot of Kellen Winslow coming off the field after that great performance so tired. Edwards may duplicate that. 
Well, you know, this is great rack here, as we were talking about before. He makes defenders miss, and then he runs a couple guys over. That's big time, tough running by a wide receiver. Pickup of 17, first and 10 on their own 43 yard line. 398 yards receiving for Edwards. Staying on his feet. Eric Clemens is standing by with someone who has one of the rings you were talking about, Artie. EC? All right, big tight end Marlon Chambers injured for this game, broken arm earlier, but there's the ring. Artie talked about rewards for this team earlier. They went 9-2 and two last year but did not get a bowl bid. That's one of them from the coaching staff to the players who played so well last year and who are really playing pretty well out here this afternoon, guys. That's a big loss for Gary Croton. Broke his arm in three places. He's got pins and plates and everything else in there. Yeah. He's 6'7", but his two backups are 6'7", too. Not bad. They like big tight ends at Louisiana Tech. 20 receptions, 400 yards now for Troy Edwards. The table will try it on the ground to Kevin Johnson from Thibodeau, Louisiana, the redshirt freshman. An unusual running play. Yeah, with two backs in the backfield and a lead play. But again, you've been thrown all the time. Nebraska's in a nickel defense. Nebraska's thinking pass. Change it up a little bit. Run an isolation up inside. Third down and five. 8.52 to play in the ballgame. Still minus yardage rushing the football. Minus 18 for Louisiana Tech. But when you have number 16, that's a lot of positive yards. Ratay again. And we have a penalty. It's going to be a pass interference against Nebraska. Joe Walker may have gotten a hand on the back. And Louisiana Tech gets a break. Walker, his left hand is around the waist of the, of the wide receiver that time. You can't do that. That is a penalty. you got to get your hands off the wide receiver when the ball is in the air. Well, the numbers on Troy Edwards, 20 catches, three off the NCAA record held by Gatewood of UNLV. He already has the NCAA record for yards. But averaging 20 Jeez. yards a catch. Mercy. Wow. First and 10, ball on the Nebraska 45-yard line. The Bulldogs trail it, 49-27, with 8.34 to play. Bobby Ray Tell in the backfield. Ratay straight back, going for Pater again. He's got a man again, and that is close to pass interference. Boy, Ralph Brown was reaching out and touching someone the whole way down. You know, Ron, that was just two really good athletes competing right there. You know, outstanding wide receiver, obviously an outstanding corner. Brown's got him in focus. He's running hip to hip. He reaches up for the football when Edwards goes up for the ball with his hands. That's just great competitiveness between two outstanding athletes. And I'll tell you what, Big Tim Ratay, he threw the ball right on yeah. the money. That was a catchable ball. Yes, it was. You, you don't want to say, gee, Troy, you should have caught it considering what he's done, but that was a big-time catchable ball. It was catchable, but Ralph Brown made a yeah. wonderful play. Second down and 10, three wide receivers to the right. Complete. Cedric Williams may have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Into number 15, Cedric Williams. Well, next week on College Football Saturday, Tim Couchton leads Kentucky against arch rival Louisville, then the Fighting Illini take on Washington State, and then Washington travels to Tempe to meet the top 10 ASU Sun Devils. Check your local listings for the games in your area. And you know, speaking of Tim Couch, last year Ratay was second as far as touchdown passes for a sophomore. The leader in that category, Tim Couch of Kentucky. Yeah, and you know, Kentucky's offense is very similar to Louisiana exactly. Tech. It's five, it's four wide receivers. It's almost basketball on a football field. Third down and seven. And I think Louisiana Tech is going to burn timeout. Delay of game. Oh, it's a penalty. Didn't get the timeout called soon enough. Another delay of game. So that'll make it a third and 12. Again, it's one of the negatives of so much substitution exactly. and so many players running in and out of the game, and sometimes the quarterback gets confused as to what the play is and who the people are that are in the game. But you know what? One pass makes up for it. 
Well, when you have Edwards, it doesn't take Retay and Edwards to long to hook it up again. Third and 12. Williams in motion. Retay over the middle. Pass is complete to Tangelosi. Not going to get a whole lot. That'll bring up a fourth down again for Louisiana Tech. Aaron Sweeney, Irwin Sweeney was on the coverage. Sweeney had a groin injury in the spring, and that was a lot of concern for the coaching staff here in Nebraska. Well, he's come back, though, and you know what he did? He did an interesting thing all spring and all fall camp. Even though he didn't participate, he stood behind the corner that was taking his place, Peterson, and he shadowed him in every play, going half speed. He felt that gave him or kept his mind mentally sharp. Edwards on the top of your screen. That 53 attempts by Rattay, the most ever against Nebraska. Penalty flag is thrown. It's intercepted. No play. I think the officials are signaling no play. Foreman with the interception. The officials are going to talk this one over. Let's listen in. Prior to the snap, there was a false start on the offense. No play. Well, the good news and bad news. <laughs> well, I'll take the good news on yeah. that one. It's not an interception, and you know, I didn't see who moved, no. but obviously Fred Gallagher, the line judge, did. Now Rattay now wants a timeout to talk about it. 49-27, our score. Nebraska leads it with 6.42 to play in the fourth quarter. Now, you talk about Louisiana Tech. This is a team that has to play at a and at Wyoming, at Auburn, at Tulane. They only have five home games. They were undefeated there last year. But I'll tell you, Gary Croton, like you mentioned a few moments ago already, he's doing it right to build this program up. And so the bowl people will look at the strength of schedule and say, we got to put these guys in a bowl. Well, yeah, plus they're exciting. And you have an All-American potentially at quarterback and obviously an All-American at wide receiver. You know, people like exciting football in, 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 in society today. And, and this is an exciting football team, at least on offense. But, you know, when you don't belong to a conference, Ron, that's what happens. Right. Hey, you got to go play the big teams. Well, in case you just joined us, we've had a dandy, a lot of explosiveness, and here's Eric Clemens with our game summary. Eric? All right, guys, boy, plenty of offense from both sides on this one. Look at Newcomb, only one incomplete pass, 158 yards and a touchdown. Rattay, 400 of that 478 yards to that man, Troy Edwards. I don't know how many people have ever come into Memorial Stadium and Osborne Field and performed the way he's performed today. Guys? All right, that's our Burger King game summary. Williams in motion, Rattay passes incomplete. It would have been short of the first down, and Nebraska will take over on downs. You know, we talked about Rattay being the best quarterback that nobody has heard of, and Edwards probably fell into that category. Uh, considering there's not a whole lot of football going on this weekend, I got a feeling those two guys are going to be heard of around the country now. Well, you know, coaches, and from with the coaches from Louisiana Tech told us pro scouts were there this spring and came away in love with both players. Now, obviously, Edwards is a senior, but, you know, Rattay also, looking at the tape, they say, wow, who's that quarterback? I think everybody's finding it out right now. Eric Crouch is coming to the ball game at quarterback. The freshman out of Omaha, Nebraska. Had a medical hardship last year. Not a whole lot of drop-off with Croucher quarterback. He's got a very strong arm, good speed. He's going to keep it on the ground, and Buck Alder. You know, he's an interesting guy, Ron. When he was a senior in high school, he ran track. And he was second in the state in the 200 meter. Erwin Sweeney, who's a corner here for Nebraska, was first in the state. So this guy's a quarterback who was second in the state in the 100 meters. So he's got some wheels now. He's got 10-5 speed, they tell us. That's not bad. Pick up a three, that was Makovica. Check that on the carry. Crouch with the pick. Try to turn the corner. Penalty flag is going to be thrown as Lance Brown getting into it with the Louisiana Tech defense. Buck Calder may have picked up a yard on the play. But we do have a flag. And it'll go against Nebraska. You know what happens a lot here, Ron? 
is Nebraska wide receivers do a great deal of blocking. And they have to block high, because if you knock a guy down immediately, he can get up and make the play. Right. So you try to shield block, and sometimes your hands wander a little bit. Obviously not on purpose, but your hands wander, and you end up holding as a wide receiver sometimes. And that's what happened that time, I believe. Frank Solich is going to have a lot of tape to look at before their next game. And there are some questions that were answered today. Holding. Offense. Ten yard penalty to the spot of the foul. Second down. But there are also a lot more questions that came out of this game. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, Ron. Absolutely. But the players have indeed rallied and moved on since Tom Osborne left. Second down and 16 inside of 545. Crouch's first pass off the hands, incomplete, intended for Kenny Cheatham. Fans wanted an interference. Not a whole lot of people have left Memorial Stadium, have they already? Well, no one ever leaves here. No, you know? That's true. You talk about tradition and you talk about football fans. There are none better than here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, you know, we, a couple times we went out to dinner on Thursday and Friday night. You ran into so many great fans. And the one thing about them, they all wear something that that's says right. Nebraska football on them. We were serenaded by the band last night at supper, much to the delight of Kenny Fouts, our director, a Nebraska grad. Was it still Nebraska back then when he was here? <laughs> Crowd straight back to pass, lost it down the middle, got a man, tripped up, incomplete. Penalty flag is thrown. Matt Davison, the hero of the Missouri game. Looked like their feet just got tangled up, and maybe the officials are going to talk about this. I'm not sure if that ball was catchable. I'm not sure either. Marion Ford, number 19, got tangled with Davison. And I think you might be right, Ron. Well, they haven't picked up the flag yet. I don't think they're going to. Pass interference, defense, automatic first down. i tell you what, I don't think that pass was catchable. We're going to take a look at that again. I don't either. If you see the end here, ball is obviously overthrown there. That is not a catchable no. pass. Well, the official closest to the play did not make the call. I'll tell you what, after sitting through a seminar with the Big 12 officials, Tim Millis and company earlier this year, I got a lot of respect, and I'm not going to question them. Oh, Those guys do a great job. And it's a tough job. 5.36 to play. Nebraska still up by 22. The pitch. The run. The penalty flag. Throw. Ball is loose. Louisiana Tech's got it. But that will depend who the penalty is on. Shevin Wiggins is the one who coughed it up. Officials are going to talk about it again. From the reaction on the field, it looks like it's holding against Nebraska. Yeah. Everybody's pointing the other way. A couple guys are jumping up and down. That's probably what it is, Ron. Well, they may not win the football game. Holding. Offense. That penalty is applied. First down. But wide. Gary Croton's team is not laid down today, and they've had every opportunity to take the tents, pitch them, and leave Lincoln with their tails between their legs. They haven't done it. Uh, you got to respect them. They're hanging in there, and they're continuing to compete. Here's Wiggins now with the football. He gets hit, and the ball just gets jarred loose. That's a great job that time by Perinetter, number 30, of knocking the ball out of Wiggins' hand. Now, since 1992, Nebraska has lost to only one unranked opponent. That was Texas in the 96 Big 12 championship game. That's Nebraska's first turnover of the game and Louisiana Tech. So Tay goes back to work wide to the right on Edwards. You talk about playing here too, Hardy. I think what is so impressive is the last 10 years, 63 and 2 at home, losing only to a couple of teams that won national championships. Not too shabby. Yeah, Colorado and the University of Washington in 1991. But hey, that's what this football program is. Yeah. And you know, you talk to Frank Solish about it. He says, hey, uh, the fans tell me what our record's going to be. I, they don't ask me how we're going to do. They tell me. That's part of the deal here. <laughs> That's one of the great comments. Rattay's pass again overthrown. Wonder if the wing may be getting a little tired. 
Next week, Nebraska will be right back here at Memorial Stadium, Tom Osborne Field, to take on UAB, and not a bad football team. And talk about a coach who's built a program from practically nothing. Oh, watching Brown's done that. Then they go out to California and play the University of California, but they have got a couple of tough games on slate. Washington will be extremely difficult, but I'll tell you, the one that I would be careful about is that oh, one right there it. against Texas A&M down in College Station. Kansas State, of course, coming up. That'll be on the 14th of November, that should have been, in Manhattan. Pass is complete to John Simon, and he pays the price for that. Eric Johnson and Chad Kelsey combined for the one-two punch. Those are two fast guys. Johnson runs a 4-4, and Kelsey, who we've talked about all day, a team captain that knows no other speed except full speed. You know what I like about Kelsey when Charlie McBride said we're fat and sluggish and all that? Kelsey just got everybody together and said, hey, there's no more horsing around here. We're going to start playing football, and we're going to play Nebraska football. They don't want to be known as the defense of Nebraska that let everybody down. The expectations are very high here. Fourth and five for Louisiana Tech. They got the first down, and John Simon, he gets up to the 50-yard line. You know, for the last four plays now, Nebraska has been in a zone defense. So they have changed up a little bit here. They've gotten away from all the man-to-man -man coverage and the combination coverages that they had been playing, and they're sitting back in more of a zone. We've had some records set today by that young man. Wide open, Cangelosi. Crosses the 25 down to the 23 before Mike Brown drags him down from behind. Up. Well, the, the records continue to be updated. I'm telling you, there's Chris uh, Anderson, the sports information director here, who's done just a magnificent job helping us out. She's got her hands full tomorrow figuring out all these records. 520 passing yards today, a new record against the University mm -hmm. of Nebraska. Wow. And think of the quarterbacks that they've played against over the years that were throwing quarterbacks. Rattay over the middle has a man incomplete. Oh, our boy Troy Edwards had it right in his hands and could not bring it in. You know, one thing about that, and they played very well against Florida two years ago in the Fiesta Bowl last year against Peyton Manning, but this style of offense is a little bit different. There's more of an emphasis, as we've been talking about, on the inside type routes, as you saw there. Edwards goes up, and he could have caught that one, yep. but it, again, he's a little bit tired, so we'll give him one <laughs> drop today, but this style of offense is just a little bit different because they don't even try to run it. On second and ten, Dagry makes his way up to about the 15-yard line. You know, another point, Ron, I, I think that's really important here, is that when you play the Floridas and the Tennessees at the end of the year, you have 11 games in which to evaluate. Here's the first game of the year. You never know. You right. know, you got a bunch of new players from Louisiana Tech. You know, the coaching staff from Louisiana Tech is devising different things, so you really don't have any immediate games to go off of. 5.27 throwing the football, minus 18 on the ground today for Gary Croker and company. <laughs> you think that's a little out of whack in terms of balance? <laughs> I'm telling you, that does not define balanced attack. Third and one. Just a quick out to James Jordan. And he'll get the first down. It'll be first and goal for Louisiana Tech. That was a swing screen. But in Gary Croton's mind, that's a running play. Because exactly. it's a short pass. It's a high percentage pass. But in his mind, even though it's not a handoff, it's a running play. Clock continues to run. 3.37 to play. The spread was 34. Got a feeling La Tech's going to beat that. Edwards looking for the end zone. Oh, my! Hurdles it for the touchdown, but we have a penalty, and that may go against Delwyn Dagry. He can't also hurdle a player like old Troy Edwards did. Dagry was holding on to a couple of red jerseys while Edwards was doing the hurdle thing. Looked like Roger Kingdom. You know what, though? It's a great example of Edwards' athletic ability. Holding. Offense. Ten yards to his follow foul. Replay. Well, you got it. You got an inch vertical lead. 
There's Edwards with the ball on the corner. Now you're going to see him go way up in the air and over the top. That's great athletic ability. But you know what else it is, Ron? It's a determination to get yeah. into the end zone. And you got to just love it. And considering how tired he's got to be right about now, did not get the score. It'll set up a first down and 13 inside of 325 to play in the ballgame. And he's got a tired back, and I don't blame him. First and goal at the 13, Rattay. Intercepted. The first bad pass. Nebraska taking it down the right side, the pitch back. Jason Wilkes was running out of steam. He coughed it up to Kari Reynolds. That is the first bad pass that that young man has thrown today. The one thing Charlie McBride told us yesterday about Jason Wilkes, he had great vision. And he had an ability to see a lot of things happening in front of him. And for the big six foot four, 310 pound guy, you know that's a highlight of his career. You're going to see him here come into the picture. He stopped on the line of scrimmage, and he sees the ball thrown. Now, Ritay doesn't get any mustard on that ball. So the big guy reaches out with one hand and nabs it out of the air. Eric Krauss continues to call the signals here in the fourth for Nebraska as we are at the three-minute mark. And we've got a couple of guys down. We've got a bunch of them down. One for Louisiana Tech. Crouch gets up slowly. Looks like it may be Larry Wright for Louisiana Tech. And also, I think, Adrian Fredericks. Now we got some muscle cramps going on, and while they try to get the guys off the field, we'll step aside. 2.58 to play. The Huskers on their way to the win. 2.58 to play. Nebraska leading at 49-27 over Louisiana Tech. Second down and four for the Huskers. Makovic and Buckhalder in the backfield. Also, Frankie London joins them, number one, who was the backup quarterback to Scott Frost last year. Movement on the left side of the Nebraska line. They'll bring that one back. You know, Frank London's an interesting story. Like you said, he was the backup quarterback a year ago. Lost the job in spring ball. Ball start to Bobby Newcomb. Offense. Five yards down. Three plays, second down. Was disappointed, but he said, hey, I'm going to do what's best for this football yep. team. And just was a real stunt about it and ends up playing wingback for this team. And, you know, you love guys like that with a character like that to put the team first over themselves. Coach has had nothing but good things to say about Frankie London and his attitude. 2.40 to play, second out of nine. Grouch will put it up in the air. The pass is complete at the 48 to Kenny Cheatham. Once again, let's take a look at the rest of Nebraska's schedule. You can see that on the 17th of October is Kansas. And as we complete October, Missouri, Texas, and then November the 14th. Will they both be undefeated, our Gigantino, when they get there? Well, no, I don't think they both will be. But I'll tell you what, you can't look ahead. You've got to take it, quote, one at a time. Both teams, Kansas State and Nebraska, have got teams on their schedule that can beat them prior to that game. Great up the middle with Makovica. I'll tell you, Kansas State's got to be careful because they also have to go to Boulder, Colorado to take on the Buffaloes. Speaking of Colorado, how about Colorado State? It's a final. Sonny Lubick and company, number 15 in the country, defeat Michigan State in East Lansing, 23-16. You know what they do at Colorado State really good? They coach really good. Yeah. Those guys do a great job. Larry Kerr on defense, Sonny Lubick, those guys do a great job of coaching at Colorado State. Brouch will put it up again, overthrows everybody. I think he was going for Lance Brown. At least he was the closest to the football. But you know, Ron, I think Colorado State's an example, and so is Louisiana Tech a little bit here today, of the 85 rule in college football. The players can only give 85 scholarships out. It's the quality that is starting to develop in college football. The other thing that's happening is people do such a good job of coaching, their scheme is a little bit of an equalizer, right. just like Gary Croton is. Well, we have a minute and 33 to play. Nebraska will keep their home winning streak alive. Their winning streak against non-conference opponents will also remain. 
Left side, big hole. Look out, Paul Buckholder. Looking for Peter. Touchdown. Correll Buckhalder's second touchdown of the afternoon. Boy, he is a strong, explosive runner. Well, everybody in Collins, Mississippi is going to be fired up about his performance. His older brother Chris was on the Philadelphia Eagle practice squad a year ago, and I tell you, they, they just keep producing tailbacks here at Nebraska, and they all look the same to me. The big guys are all over 210 pounds, they're fast, and they know how to run with the football, and they run violently with the football. Violently is a good word. Brown will stay perfect on the afternoon, and with 124 to play in the ball game, the Huskers hang another one on. 56-27 is our score. We'll be back right after this. 56-27, Nebraska over Louisiana Tech, but that does not overshadow some great performances by Louisiana Tech as our offensive player of the game is Troy Edwards. 405 yards receiving, that is a new NCAA record. He is our Cabela offensive player of the game and our defensive player of the game. Belongs to the Huskers. Ralph Brown right in the middle of your screen. Six tackles, three pass breakups. He is our Cabela's defensive player of the game and the players of the game are brought to you by Cabela's the world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor equipment. You know, in a game like this, the defensive linemen and the linebackers don't get a lot of action. They're rushing the passer all the time, but they're not in on a lot of tackles because the ball is thrown down the field. The DBs are more involved, not only in the pass defense, but obviously in tackling the receivers. Well, Dan Hayden felt kicks it away. Louisiana Tech, Kevin Johnson on the return. Well, the executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. Coordinating producer of College Football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Today's game was produced by Mike Helling, directed by Ken Fouts, and the vice president of field operations is Andrea Jenkins. Thank you, folks, for all the effort today. And special thanks to Chris Anderson here at Nebraska for her hospitality and her effort. Brian Miller at Louisiana Tech. And as always, our cameramen and our crew did a great job again, Ron, of getting shots and replays and all kinds of angles. Just outstanding. And in the new press box here that's being built, it was a difficult day for him. Angelosi on the catch. We're in the old press box, but the new press box, you can see the construction, which will be ready next year, and look how it dwarfs where we are right now. Yeah, we're, we're here somewhere, right up in there, but this baby is a $36.1 million project, and they're putting a new press box and sky box for um, sky boxes, 40 sky boxes. So it's going to be an awesome, awesome structure when it's done. Now Rattay's pass is complete again. We all had to wear hard hats the last two days, and our crew began to look a little bit like the village people. I was getting a little worried. You know, I have never had a hard hat on. You look good, though. Yeah, That's right. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> That's my first time yeah. I've ever had a hard hat on. Well, Edwards goes wide to the left, the final 40 seconds of the game. Rattay is not stopping throwing the football. Edwards breaks free, he's wide open, they didn't see him as the first sack of the afternoon, believe it or not. Or third sack, I should say. But considering how many passes that young man has thrown, not too bad. And they want to hurry it up. Edwards very slow to get back. Clock is running, final 15 seconds of this ball game. Rete, pass is complete right at the 50. The Delwin Degri. Wait a minute, I think somebody called a timeout. Louisiana Tech has called a timeout. That's interesting. The fans don't like it. <laughs> uh, I, maybe one of the players made a mistake, but you, you know what? You got to take your hat off to Louisiana Tech here. You know, they have done a great job of hanging in there today and competing with the University of Nebraska. I mean, no one gave them a chance to win, but I'll tell you, they moved the football, yep. obviously, here today, and I think this program is in great hands with that guy right there. Gary Croton is the head football coach. How about Frank Solich? Let's go to the other side of the field. There was so much hype and buildup on Frank the last couple of weeks, and ever since he first found out last July he was going to take over, you think he's relieved? 
Well, he's relieved, and, you know, he's the right guy for this job. He kept the continuity, as we talked about, with the staff. He knows Nebraska. I don't think they're going to skip a beat with that Not guy. It'll be a little different in some areas, but the winning, the running the option, the running the football will continue. Final play of the football game. The pass is complete to John Simon, who's finally going to be run out of bounds, and that's going to do it. 56-27 is the final. The Nebraska Cornhuskers set to defend their 1997 national champion. Solis gets a congratulations from Turner Gill, and they win it. But Gary Croton and Louisiana Tech Bulldogs gave them everything they could handle. Yeah, and you know, for Frank Solich, again, it's good to, like you said, Ron, to have it over with, to get into the flow now of the season, and to get into your normal routine. And, you know, like I said, without repeating myself, I think he'll do a great, great job here at the University of Nebraska. Well, that was interesting. Gary Croton spending a lot of time talking to Frank Solich. But I think Gary Croton was so excited to be able to play a team the stature of Nebraska. Now let's send it down to the field, Eric Clemens. Well, Coach, uh, congratulations on that Thank first you. victory of the new era. I know there are some things you want to work on your assessment of your team in this game today. I thought we uh, played well at times. You know, we need to certainly get more consistent. I thought both teams were a little bit erratic in the second half. Certainly we were a little more erratic than they were in the second half. Uh, I think they both teams wore down a little bit, and the play got a little sloppy with quite a few penalties. But uh, all in all, I'm real pleased with our players, and, and I thought that Louisiana Tech did a did a great job, too. It was a good ball game. Their passing game, did, did that expose something that you might not have known existed, any kind of weakness in your secondary or anything? No, they've exposed uh, that on everybody they've played uh, <laughs> that I know of, at least in the films that we've watched. And they're, uh, they're an excellent throwing team. Uh, certainly their quarterback did a great job. Edwards is just super. Uh, I loved his heart. Uh, and I think their kids battled. And, and uh, they've got a good football team, and I wish them the best of luck down the road. Thanks, so much. Thank Congratulations you. to okay. you. All right, we'll be back with final numbers after this, but remember the numbers of Troy Edwards, folks. 405 yards receiving right here at Memorial Stadium today. Back with more in just a moment. 56-27 the final score. The first Eddie Robinson Classic now in the books. Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow coming to you from Lincoln, Nebraska Memorial Stadium. And Kellen, does a red flag go up now? Do offensive coordinators across the Big 12 say, hey, we can light up the Nebraska secondary? Well, I think this is an isolated incident, but they will take a few shots at the Nebraska secondary. But I can't think of too many quarterbacks in the Big 12 like Mr. Rattay. Yeah, great game by Louisiana Tech. They chalk up 569 yards passing nonetheless things continue to roll for Nebraska as they win let's go to the guys who called the game Ron Thulin and Artie Gigantino guys thank you gentlemen Artie Gigantino this may be tough for you one word to describe Troy Edwards performance tremendous 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 that's three words <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll let it go 56 27 Nebraska wins it Tim Rattay what a great job that young man did this afternoon setting all sorts of school and NCAA records along with his teammate number 16 Troy Edwards. Once again, the final score, 56-27. Be sure to join us next week on College Football Saturday for a triple header. Kentucky and Louisville, Illinois versus Washington State, and Washington versus Arizona State. And coming up tonight on Fox Sports Net, it's the second semifinal match of the Hamlet Cup from New York. Once again, the final score, Nebraska defeats Louisiana Tech. 56 to 27 for Artie Gigantino, Eric Clemens, and our entire crew. I'm Ron Thulin. Thanks for watching. You've been watching the Eddie Robinson Classic on Fox Sports Net.